Hadi, what's up, man? What's up? I love that it's just Hadi. It's just Hadi. What's the story behind that? It's because my family name is so complicated, my own family can't write it or say it. So uh, it's very long. Works for me. So I was thinking, you know, when when I get booked to play shows, it's just easier to have a logo that's just four letters versus yeah. 16,000 letters. It works and it travels well, both lo- Thank you. locally and abroad. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I was always mindful of like what it would be like for the non-Arab to say yeah, yeah, my yeah. name. Yeah, yeah. But... I guess it's it. I guess it's stuck, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you got us over. But I want to say thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. I need to thank you. Listen, before we we go there, my brother has been telling me about you for a while. Oh, so, okay. So he's been shout out to your brother. Thank you. He's been listening to your stuff, and he's like, "Man, have you heard of of Hadi?" I was like, "Yeah, I think so." He, he showed me your. I was like, "Yes, I've I've come across this." He's like, "Man, he's really good. You nice. you should contact him." And that's actually when I I, I reached out to you. That was a while was, back. Yeah, like a couple and months. Yeah. I appreciate you being very patient and accommodating. Um, all, all good, man. Listen, when the time is right, the time yeah. is right. And and luckily, you reached out again recently yeah. because you have some super exciting news yeah. which we'll get into here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm 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 blessed that you're here. Thank you. You're super talented, man. Your voice is just bigger than life. It's, Thank you. <laughs> it, no, it's it's really killer. And thank you so much. We'll, we'll get into into how you got here and, yeah. and all that. Yeah. Um, so it's Hedy plays music. That's kind of where you are everywhere. Yeah, that's where people can find me. It's okay. on all the uh, social media platforms: Twitch, uh, Instagram, yeah, TikTok, yeah, yeah. everything. It's Hedy plays music. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and I actually uh, a very good friend of mine uh, and I we we sort of came up with that because I was playing a show, and um, at the time I can't even remember what my Instagram. Uh, handle was it was something really sad yeah and uh <laughs> why sad though it was probably something like had the official oh, and oh had, gotcha like, as sad I, as in like it's just not it was sad <laughs> yeah, because yeah. it was like wishful thinking because like it, i had like 600 followers yeah, yeah. why would you be the official page when you only have 600 followers hey you are officially you correct yeah true i mean thanks for making <laughs> me feel better about it but anyway it was one of those things yeah, where it's yeah, like yeah. you feel you feel more important than you really are at that moment yeah, you yeah. know what i mean and i guess that's important in a way because you are the driving force right of course so if you feel important, it's, it is important. But anyway, my friend and I were, you know, sort of on like, uh, it was it was a kind of gig where I play a little bit and then take a break and play a little yeah, bit, yeah, take yeah. a break. And then we, he was like, I think you need a tag. You need something that's like easy to pick up for people who don't know who you are. Yeah. To just like, you know, something to associate you with. What does Hedy do? Yeah. So it's like, I was like, hashtag Hedy plays music. Let's do that. So yeah, yeah. it stuck. I think it was like 2016 or something. Yeah, nice. So I was just like, you know what? Let's just roll. roll well, and, and plus... You know, usernames or <laughs> handles go in trends. There was a while where it was something official. Then it mm-hmm. was I am whatever. Yeah, and yeah. then it was the <laughs> blah, blah, yeah, blah. Yeah, yeah. The real, <laughs> you know. So, you know, Hattie, Hattie plays music works for me because yeah. it's like, it tells the story. That's, that's like more than your elevator pitch. Like, what do you yeah. mean? I play music. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? I mean, and also on on uh, places like Twitch, for example, where yeah. it's a platform uh, commonly known as a place for gamers, I think. Yeah. But now, like over the last couple of years, it's shifted massively. Yeah, for sure. So you've got artists, you've got musicians, you've got gamers, you've got all sorts. So when you go into someone's channel, yeah, um, it's it's it breaks the ice. It's just like, oh, what kind of music do you do? Yeah. So it immediately starts a conversation. So it works. It works out. I'm gonna try to stay away from the like super obvious questions that you've probably been asked a million times, but I'm always curious to to know how you caught the bug for music. Yeah. So I was in Lebanon at the time. I I was actually born in Kuwait. Okay. And I spent three years. In, in my waking life yep. in Lebanon. So I spent more years than that, but those that I remember. And uh, towards the end of that stint in Lebanon, um, I had, and I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like, you know, it, it'll, it'll show my age, but, yeah, which I'm it's comfortable all good, with. Man. It's all good. 34 years old, uh, but, I'm, but. I've got 10 on you, I'm 44, yeah, it's all good. Man. Yeah, so, so, um, so basically what happened was I, I had on the PlayStation, I got a bootleg of a game called Music 2000. Nice. It was like a beauty, bootleg copy, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Unofficial. This is, we're still in Lebanon here? It's still in Lebanon, yep. right? Playing, playing uh, that game on the PlayStation. And that game was essentially uh, a DAW. Yep. Uh, sort of like Ableton and oh, Logic okay. and all that's of that cool. stuff. It had samples built in. Nice. Right? And you just drag and drop. And this was your songs. introduction. Yeah, that's how I got into it. <laughs> wow. Right? And then and then the thing with it, because it was the bootleg version, mm. there was no way for me to save. So yeah. whatever I created, I can only listen to it until Tanat al Yeah, which is a, a very common place. Tanat al for those who don't know, is electricity literally goes out. Yeah. You lose power. Without warning. Without warning. I mean, warning. you sort of know sometimes because they you, you get an idea of the pattern. Yeah. But it's just like, you know, it's going to happen. And sometimes it's random. So it's like, you know, you'd be, I would, I'd be chilling, just kind of ma- working on a song um, and just using samples and stuff. And yeah. then boom, it's gone. 
Right. And what kind of music were you making at that time? I don't even know. Whatever samples were there, like there was a little bit of distorted guitars. Gotcha. And, and at the time, actually, is when I seriously, seriously got into it because during that same period is when In the End came out mm. and Evanescence also surfaced, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Bring Me to Life and stuff. So it was early I, 2000s. Yeah, talking, yeah. Yeah. So when, when In the End came out, I was like, what the fuck is this? And where can I find more of it? So um, it just hit me like a storm. What would you say was the closest thing to it at that point? Because there wasn't really anything nothing, like it. Nothing. There it was, was nothing. either Metallica or yeah. rap. There was nothing kind of blending. Yeah. was completely unaware of all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. that whole world. Because I was in Lebanon listening to the radio. So whatever was on the radio, I'd love. What music were you listening like to? Like a lot of trance, a lot of techno. Western music? Western. Mo- fully, mostly, fully yeah. Western. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, you know, uh, on the bus on the way to school, we'd listen to like Fairuz and yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah. which is kind of cool. The I classics. Love, yeah. yeah. I love that kind of music. Uh, I don't go out and look for it, to be sure, honest. But sure. if it's on, I'll enjoy you it. You don't seek it. Yeah. Yeah. And the end comes out. And then... I just hear that and it hits me, hits me like a wave. Yeah, it's, it was a monster. Man. Yeah, it's crazy, right? And then um, incidentally, one of my classmates, uh, his cousin was visiting and he had the Hyper Theory CD. Wow. And he was like, I want you to just take the CD and just take it in, right? And it was just like every song on that album was mind-blowing. Did anyone at that point know that you were dabbling in music, even if it was just no. like... No, I mean, I was like the most, like there's shy kids. Yeah. And then there's me like with my own section of my, my own brand of shy, <laughs> right? <laughs> Just like hiding in the shadows yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and and not wanting to be seen, not wanting to be a part of society. Not to get into the psychology of that too much. Yeah. Is there a reason? Can you, can you... I just, I just, for me, like, and I'm happy to go into the psychology yeah, yeah, yeah. of it because I think of it a lot. You actually. have brothers. Yeah, uh, I do. Right? I guess I was my brother's brother okay at the school yeah, yeah. i was the younger guy gotcha. i was the brother was what's the, what's your order between you i'm the middle guy so i get gotcha. away with everything yeah, yeah. uh so so for me uh i was i was my brother's brother yeah, yeah. we yeah. were we were all together just like a really quiet family gotcha. like gotcha. really like you know and, i mean neighbors never heard this is sound. beirut or uh, uh, Biljabal, in Biljabal. Okay. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah, nice. yeah in the village yeah yeah in the village so um and also during that time i i was more comfortable in english mm. Because we'd been brought up in Kuwait and yeah. we were into an English yeah, English yeah. school. And then you got to know, like, if you're an English speaker, but Daya in the village. It's a big deal. It's kind of, you're you're going to stick out. Of, like a sore thumb. Like a sore thumb. Of course, and of for course. the wrong reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to be the poser. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, mister, I'm too good to be speaking yeah. Arabic. Or, yeah. It's like, yeah. why do you have that accent? Why do you sound that way? Right. right? I, I deal with that on a daily basis. Mm. Like, guys, this isn't a show. I'm not posing like yeah. this is what i was exposed to yeah. you know it, you know but also i get it like if, yeah, of I, course, was, of if course. I was on the other side i was that guy at, yeah. at some point i mean not to deviate too much i yeah. grew up in france right. you know so when i came back to syria i still wasn't fully you know capable of expressing You're myself more on the french side i was yeah and then you know the arabic seeped in and then i started to judge people that were talking non-arabic i was like mm. like it's just funny how you go from like yeah you you sort of uh, take take on a lot of a lot of it is also like from the psychology is wanting to belong right Absolutely. because when people on are on a certain I'm flow, the guiltiest man I'm like all I yeah. wanted to do my whole life <laughs> is blend in like yeah. guys I'm no different I'm just like yeah. you yeah. you know it's we're like all what the color same. what color do you like what color do you like yeah, exactly. and then I'll just pick that one that's my favorite yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> so so for me I I was always sort of um, I was I always wanted to not be seen and not yeah, stick yeah. out yeah. like I, you know. Uh, like asking that first girl out and 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 during those three years was yeah. like the scariest experience of How my life. How old are you here? I don't know, like Teens? 14, yeah. Yeah. you know, just getting on 15. The perfect age. Yeah, yeah right. So, so I started, uh, I think I was actually a little bit younger than that in Lebanon. Yeah. Um, but anyway, um, so I, I, I listened to Hybrid Theory and I take it in and all of that stuff. And then soon after we moved to Kuwait, yep. when I moved to Kuwait, I just feel like life was sort of showing me little breadcrumbs along the way. Sure. And, uh, you know, at the time, uh, I really didn't have any interests, nothing that would define me as a person. I was just, you know, just trying to, trying not to be Rock in anyone's way. Much, yeah, yeah, I just wanted to not be noticed and stuff. When I moved to Kuwait back with my family, um, there was a guy in my class who played guitar. And, he, and we went out this one time just like as a group. And he just played the guitar and I just 
it I saw that and like I have goosebumps right now yeah, yeah, yeah. right and I'm just like what is that if like it hits you that way yeah you, you've been stung I mean and dude yeah, I yeah. couldn't stop thinking about it like yeah. it was the, it was really strange because I would just was like, it what he played or how he played or no, just the whole it had nothing none none of that right okay, okay. it wasn't even the fact that he was playing in front of people okay um and like you know people were like gushing over him and stuff I had no interest in that sure, sure, sure. for me it was just the idea of like I just couldn't help but daydream about just having the guitar at home i think it it it's aligned with you being more reserved yeah so you're like that's my out that's yeah. my best friend that's yeah. that's how i express myself it could be yeah, right yeah, i don't yeah. know i don't know what it was like i can't exactly tell what it was but but i didn't fight it so i was like you know started saying to my parents can we please just get a guitar and my parents being the awesome folks that they are uh we went to the guitar shop i'm so glad they took you yeah, up on it yeah so very soon after i picked up my first uh, and it was the exact same guitar that that guy okay, had okay. right same same guitar yeah and so i started playing uh, a little bit not really too serious just sort of dabbling for nine months yep. and then um picked up an electric guitar after that and because I, in that time as well, was it an acoustic or a classical? It or? was like a Spanish guitar, the oh, okay. nylon, okay. nylon yeah, strings, yeah, yeah. right? So, uh, and I would just change the tuning so that it's easier to play certain things and stuff. You taught yourself, I assume? Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, it's, I, I, I don't know if it's right to say self-taught because I was always watching videos and that, that is self-taught. Yeah. I mean, I mean, someone is showing you the way, but you're doing the part. It's not yeah. formal as in like someone no, shows up yeah. or you no go classes. and pay. Yeah, no yeah, classes. Gotcha. It, during that time when I had the acoustic, the Spanish guitar, mm -hmm. Uh, one of my other classmates who I became very, very, very close with was into like system of a down and okay. slipknot. And I was like, what is that? Right. Like yeah. that's why is there so much blood involved with this band? It's foreign. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then obviously Linkin Park sure. and all of that stuff. Yep. So I had, uh, you know, picked up the metal bug. What was your metal at that point? Uh, musically speaking. Like from the metal side? No, no. Your metal as in your center. What, what uh, was, what was like, this is my comfortable zone um, musically. Well, I guess I would say Linkin Park was the... Oh, it was? Okay. Yeah, so yeah. you had gone from whatever you were listening to, to that genre. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. So okay. I think Linkin Park was like the centerpiece yep. of it all. And then Metallica became another centerpiece. Sure. And then Coldplay as well. Yep. Um, and then soon after Dream Theater for a few years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so I got into like the deep end yep. uh, and uh, picked up the guitar. And then when I picked up the electric guitar, something switched, right? My social life tanked. Um, <laughs> I like, you know, I, people wouldn't see me. What do you attribute that to? Because I, I just, I was like obsessed because I kept thinking about all these guitarists and I was obsessed. Like I didn't sing at all. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I yeah, was yeah. so self-conscious. I, I, I read that, that that's almost uh, something you stumbled onto. Like yeah, yeah, more yeah, like yeah. by mistake. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And no, uh, with the, with the singing thing, I, I was, I, again, barely spoke. Mm. Yeah, I mean, within my friends, I did, sure, sure, sure. but like publicly didn't want to be yeah. like the speaker for anybody. Didn't yeah. want to lead, didn't want to do anything. Yeah. So, um, that's fascinating. Yeah. yeah. So even when I picked up the guitar, uh, actually we'll get into that, get into that. But when I picked up the electric, it's just like a switch. So mm. I started thinking about what John Petrucci would do, yeah. what Michael Romeo would do, sure. what Ingve Malmsteen would do. Yeah. Like, would they would they go out with their friends mm -hmm. or would they sit with a metronome? So you, just, you lived it. You, you yeah. totally immersed yourself. Yeah, I basically it. went to gym on the guitar, yeah. right? So um, just hours and hours. And I remember like like actual pain in my solar plexus from the boredom, Yeah. right? But it's like, like I would be so bored from just the... the, the, the but that discipline, man. Yeah. I mean, you put in your hours, you put in the, the reps and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah, and the thing is for me, um, I feel like... You know, I mean, just looking around at the studio, I see how much dedication there is here. I feel yeah. like there's a lot of stuff that you maybe relate to and uh, on, on, on those things. But yeah. like for me, what really struck me is that when I was in school, my parents would always ask me to study. They would always ask uh, me to mm -hmm. do chores. They yeah, would yeah. Always, nobody asked me to do anything with music. Same for right. I, I, I just yeah. I couldn't stop. Like again, goosebumps. I couldn't stop myself from doing it, and I had to pay respect to that feeling. You listen to it. It's yeah. a calling and, and you know, I, I really want to zero in on the goosebump effect because mm. to me, it's my barometer, man. It's like, it's what moved the needle for me. Yeah. How much do you listen to that feeling? Like, Is it with filmmaking for you? Any No, mu music, for me, it was always music. Right, okay. Music is, and will the, the forever core. be my core. Right. This is all like... The stuff happy, on the side. It, it's, this is my like side chick, even though <laughs> I, I love it and I, I, you know, I do it well, but my core has always been music, yeah. but like I can vividly name either a song, a video, like an what? album, like Michael Jackson, seeing right. Michael Jackson for the first time, for instance, oh. that was life altering. Yeah. Uh, in that um, early nineties in the U S when I 
kind of caught the the sound of the early 90s R&B yeah. with Boyz II Men and, and Babyface. Right. Babyface was both a producer, a singer, a writer. That gave me directions. Like, I love what this guy's doing. Yeah. That's what I, I want to be that. Yeah. You know, it just yeah. really gave me direction. Yeah. I mean, I barely spoke any English in 92 when we first moved there. And I heard End of the Road by Boyz II Men. Mm. I mean, like the goosebumps. I, yeah. I, I can't describe it. Yeah. It, it's just like, and again, Boyz II Men later on uh, with One Sweet Day, Mariah Carey. I'd never heard the song. Yeah. I was sleeping three rooms away from where the, the sound was coming from. Four notes into it. I woke up in full body goosebumps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like... Not feeling, many things can do that to A you. feeling that strong, A, isn't random. Yeah. But, you, you know, you may not, you know, heed the call. Like you have to know what... Something's communicating. And yeah. it's almost like calling you, yeah. you know? And it's just like, I, I listened and I, I yeah. answered, you know? Yeah. And I'm a big believer in, uh, like, you know, uh, the universe is always conversating with us and we can choose to listen or sure, not. Sure, sure, sure. And so a lot of times for me, I've experienced it in my life a lot where I, when I was doing things that weren't really in the in the, in the the lane that that is mine, that, you know, the universe would always do something sure. to kind of mess to with me a little bit. The, yeah, 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 just mess with me a little bit, you know? How serious are you? Yeah, <laughs> and the thing is also, like, the more I, um, the more I would ignore the path, the more the the signs would get stronger. So yeah. like you'd get a small thing, like you'd bump your foot in the door or, or like, something. Oh, it's, it's a flesh wound. And yeah, then it, and then it starts getting a little bit more oh, intense, yeah. right? It's severe, yeah. Yeah, so the universe cranks the volume a little bit on I, you. So yeah. I've learned to just listen to that without... Um, without. How, how long did it take you to get in tune with messages or whatever you want to call it? Like Forever. Yeah. <laughs> forever. Far uh, too I'm long. the same, like... It's just in terms of signs, a lot of people, especially my best friend, Hassan, mm. he's huge on signs and he he's, he has visions straight up. Yeah, um, I'm, I don't need to see them to believe that he does. I fully believe that yeah. he does. But like, I'm Mr. Unless there's a sign, literally. Mm. Hi, this is <laughs> the universe. But it happens. It, it does. Yeah. But I'm telling you, like, unless it's that, I'm like, signs don't exist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? So you're a bit of a skeptic. Uh, not skeptic. I'm, uh, yeah. I mean, listen, I have faith. I'm spontaneous. Um I'm a man of faith. I'm not yeah. like, oh, this is all random. Yeah, of course. It might be random, but it, it's like organized chaos. You yeah, know? Like, yeah. I don't, I, I, I'm not here claiming to know the answers, but for the longest time, it's like, what, what else could it be? Because we attach meaning to things. Yeah. Like literally, I could insult you. Yeah. And if you're programmed a certain way, you can take that as me complimenting you yeah, yeah, or yeah. vice versa. Mind you, that's a bit extreme. But, 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 but also, also for me, what I've learned is it, it all fully, fully depends on how it makes you feel of when course. you when you are just alone, like how, how you sleep at night from yeah. it, yeah. right? Yeah. So so I I you can't sit and try to sell that to me or me try to sell it to of you yeah. because at the end of the day it's your truth it's and my personal, truth, absolutely. right? Absolutely. So for you, if you see certain, sometimes it's a feeling in your body, yeah. sometimes it's a physical thing. So like for me, I always like I have this ringing in my ear and and I hear it. So like when I'm thinking something and it's not really in line with my truth. I get a ringing in my left ear. And if it's in line, I get a ringing in my right ear. It, it's awareness. I mean, I think first it seems random and then it repeats enough. And yeah. then you're like, is there something here? My fear, I guess, I'm sure you're familiar with, uh, with um, um, confirmation bias. Mm. So you gravitate towards anything that supports that. You know what I mean? That's right, confirmation. Yeah, of course. You know what I mean? So of course. I, I'm big on not inserting. It's like if you're eyeing a car and you want to buy it, you see nothing but that exactly. car on it's the road. It's similar to that. Yeah. It's not, that's not exactly confirmation bias, but you're like hyper-focused. Right, right. So my whole thing is like, oh, like for the whole, everything happens for a reason. I, I resisted that for a second because is that reason singular, mm. universal, you know, like void of space and time or is it? Is it absolute? That's what I'm yeah. saying. Like, so I don't want to be the guy that says, oh, it definitely means that because mm. while yes, it can, I have to leave even the slightest room for it to, that's just my interpretation. Yeah, of yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that's why it's not that I'm a skeptic person. Yeah, yeah. It's just, I didn't want to fall into the, oh, well, this supports how I feel. So I'll just run yeah. with it, you know? But like, even in that, like I go back and forth. So like, I'll have, uh, I'll have my moments where it's like the smallest thing could drive me towards a, a certain thing, just a yep. feeling. Yep. But sometimes I really need the universe just to tell me one more time. You yeah. know what I mean? Just like, show me one more thing. But, but so you've established a relationship because yeah. some people, again, Signs can or cannot be there, depending. It's all in the eye of the beholder, mm. right? So if you believe in signs, they're there. Yeah. If you don't believe in signs, to you, they're not there. Yeah. And you're not wrong in thinking they're not yeah. there to you because it's all based on whoever is, is, is the receiver of it. So it's clear that enough things have happened where you're like, okay, let's put this one to the yeah. test. I'm aware that these things exist. 
and I'll listen or not listen. You know, on... you know what it feels like to me? It feels like if you got, a, got in your car and you change the radio frequency and yeah. you're listening to a Absolutely. station. So for me, it's like I'm tuning a, in. To, yeah, it's yeah. like a frequency and, and I, I, I can choose to listen or not. And, and the thing is the universe like or life or whatever you want to call it's it. Broadcasting it a ton yeah, of, yeah, it's always broadcasting yeah. and it doesn't like, I mean, it wants you to listen. But if but you have free will as well, you can choose not to. So for me, I choose to because it impacts my my mental health. Sure. It impacts my uh, my anxiety a That's lot. That's your jam, man. Yeah, yeah. it helps me. It helps me yeah, so much. So sure. a lot of the times uh, for me is just about um, like you know I don't know if this sounds a little bit too out there, but a lot of times in my life because I tend to think about things a lot and I process things a lot, a lot, a it's lot. It's clear. Yeah. 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 So a lot of times when I find that the wheels are turning too hard and there's just, I'm not going to, I'm not going to land. Do you, how do you quiet that down? Yeah. So I just ask for something. I ask for dreams to show me things. Okay. And I actually, a lot of times get do get visions. And, ask and you shall receive. Yeah. I mean, again, is that true? I don't know, but it, it certainly has worked for me. Yeah. I mean, I'm not out here trying to sell it, yeah, that, but bro, for I, me, I, I feel you hundred percent. Yeah. For me, it has kind of always led me to a place uh, yeah, yeah, i don't yeah. know how we ended up on this but i love it <laughs> no, this is again this is where anything goes in terms of but it all you know it all points to the yeah. creativity and where that comes from there's a great book by liz gilbert called big magic i don't mm -hmm. know if you're aware no it, and it's all about messages it's all about you know the universe is full of ideas it'll yeah. literally come knock on your door yeah you e either answer it and if you don't it'll go to someone else yeah so you, you you're kind of incubator you know what i mean like but also on that right and I, i'd love yep. to get your thoughts on this uh i feel that um there is a, a shipping container yeah up in the sky yeah and it's it all it has ideas that are only accessible by me as okay. hadi okay right okay and there's one that's only accessible by you and every individual has their own shipping container i'll tell you my take on that yeah. i think it's an idea that becomes hadi's if hadi takes takes it on I mean, we all borrow ideas from No, no, each for other. sure. That's yeah. not what I'm saying about whether it's unique to you or not. Yeah. I just feel like, um, not, not to burn the book, but yeah. a lot of it has to do with a phenomenon of her writing a book and then meeting someone that was reading the, writing yeah, the yeah, exact yeah, yeah, same yeah, book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that idea, even though if they had both written it, it's not going to be the same book, but yeah. if you take like the, the big ticket items, it's practically the same yeah, story. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I mean. Like, well, yes, there is a shipping container. I think it becomes yours the second you say, challenge accepted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to... Yeah. When you take it on. Yes, that's what yeah, I'm saying. But yeah. I feel in, until it inhabits you, it's it belongs to whoever wants to listen. 100%. If, you know, because it can come to you and you're like, you ignore it. It might go somewhere else. Mind you, this yeah. is all like... <laughs> the, thing is, you know? the thing is, these ideas end up getting created anyway. But sure. what I'm trying to say is, for me, it's like, uh, because touching on something else is that I, I think we're all competitive in nature. Yep. I'm a very, very, very competitive guy within myself. To a fault or? Um, I think I think I used to be when I didn't know that I was competitive or yep. when I didn't agree with myself. Sure. Like, my mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. like, I didn't have that conversation with myself. Like, listen, you're a very competitive guy, right? So, so I became healthy about my competition when I agreed within myself and accepted that I am a competitive guy. So now my, my sense of competition exists on a more internal level. And I try to operate in a way where it's like, what would I do if I was the only musician on earth? Yeah. What would I make? Mm -hmm. What would I, what kind of stories would I tell? Yeah. So I'm not really trying to uh, one up anybody. I'm trying to one up myself. And, and that's, that's healthy. But again, I was exactly where you are not to say, Oh, I'm past it. And now yeah. I'm wise now, but <laughs> listen, in Arabic, there's a saying, mm. there's a wisdom that you acquire with experience yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and all yeah. that stuff. Things I'm not going to say slow down your competitiveness gets ch channeled differently. Yeah, yeah, you know for I mean? sure. But that competitiveness serves you for a certain... Yeah. And you can lean into it when you need yeah. it. But you, you'll realize or find at your own pace that there's more to it than just that. You yeah, know yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it, it's serving a purpose at a certain time. Yeah, So yeah. don't fight it. It's like, but it's it's like an unraveling going, thing. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and you're going through that. Yeah. It's clear that that's what yeah. you're communicating. So so for me, it's like, uh, you know, I, 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 I've i always developed that. And I and I think, you know, since we're talking about the guitar practice uh -huh. and locking yeah. myself yeah. in my room and yeah. doing that, I think that was like, I wanted to do better. I sure. wanted to be better. And I, 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 like, I was obsessed. There's always more you can do. Yeah. It's, that's not a game you win at. It's no. not something that's like, okay, game over. I beat the boss's boss. Yeah. <laughs> it just keeps on going. No ending. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, th but that's, that's what, like, right now, uh, say you just publish some things, sure. be it a song yep. or a video, mm -hmm. right? You're going to feel great about it for mm -hmm. a very small window of time. Mm -hmm. And then after that, 
the satisfaction of creating it and releasing it and is, is just going to be life, man. out in thin air. Yeah. And then you're going to want to do the next thing. And I think that is beautiful because for sure, for sure. it keeps us alive. It, you know? it does. It's like, man, it's a carrot in the stick, you yeah. know, not to get again too like spiritual or whatever, yeah. but like obviously, or for me personally, you know, I was, I definitely lived, I spent a lot of time in my past mm. being nostalgic and a lot of past, a lot of time in my future and not enough in the present, what I'm happy, you know, when I was exposed to whole being present and being, you know, it opens you up. It yeah. sounds a bit too fluffy rainbows and butterflies. It's difficult, by the way. It, it is. It, it's not an easy thing. Yeah. It, it, Regardless of what the label is or what the practice is, you, you know, an event, a sign, whatever you want to call it, happened and it completely like snapped me into yeah. like, nothing's promised. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. So it, it, it's cool to take stock and say, I did this, but you don't want to get stuck in the, this yes. is what I did. Yes. And you don't want to get stuck in tomorrow because you don't know what's going to happen, yeah. nor do you necessarily want to be here. But all you have, if we're going to be technical about it, is is literally now, as right you're going now. through yeah. it. So. Finding that balance for me is really what yeah. what quieted me down because yeah. I was too way 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 too um, focused on oh the next thing the big yeah. thing where and am I going to be in absolutely X, uh, yeah. but that's what I mean with the carrot and the stick you, you need both the carrot is it keeps you going yeah if it doesn't grow it dies and, and that applies to anything yeah. right yeah so it's you growing and, and getting to that next level so. I mean for me also one of the main things that helped me sort of uh, find a little bit more peace and balance is that. I like, and this hit me hard with playing live because, you know, um, becoming a, uh, looking at myself as a performer sure. rather than just a guy who plays guitar and, you know, happens to sing and looking at myself accepting. Yeah, what, go ahead. What, when did that happen for you? The, that, the first performance? Oh man. Uh, the first show ever. Uh, luckily there wasn't a lot of people there. Uh, it was actually, there was a lot of people there. It was at a school. Okay. In and Ku are we in Kuwait? In Kuwait, or, yeah. yeah. So this was like probably uh, uh, less than a year after I started playing electric okay. guitar. So it's like... How competent did you feel? Not at all, man. Okay. Like okay. really terrible, to be honest. And we we played uh, Wherever I'm in Rome by Metallica. Mm -hmm. And we played a couple more songs. And when uh, you say we, were you in a band? Yeah, or? it was okay. me and a couple other friends. And... Uh, uh, I remember the guy who booked booked us for this show, right? The, our first booking yeah. agent, yeah, the yeah, guy yeah. who booked us was like, listen, I can get you this gig, but on one condition. Yeah. Or we're like, what? And he knew we were going to say yes because we were dying to play. Yeah. He's like, I, I rap on one of the songs. And I was yeah. like, oh, of course, you know, of course the, you the purest in me. And not against rap. It's sure, just because sure, sure. someone was like. They inserted themselves yes, into exactly, the whole thing. You know, so. Um, so, you know, he, he did that. And unfortunately he, he did that. Was there an audience for the kind of music you guys were performing or was it? I mean, we, we were just doing whatever, man. Like we were just doing like, a, like, like, you know, a few bars of Nirvana, a few mm -hmm. bars mm -hmm. of whatever the guy knew, you know, someone yeah. would jump on drums, someone okay, would jump okay. on bass. So. I'm just wondering if whoever was there was, were active participants, active listeners of that genre or I'll just I'll tell there? you that nobody wanted us to be there. Gotcha. Okay. Fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. Flat out. You got to start, you got to start somewhere, man. <laughs> nobody wanted us to Imagine be there. Imagine you go somewhere and suddenly it's like, oh, they're all instant fans. I mean, yeah. You know, the it's odds weird. Of that happening. It's weird. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So anyway, nobody wanted us to be there. And but 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 the thing is, like, from the performer perspective, I think that uh, for me, I think it was kind of instilled somehow in some way in my DNA that I was defined by everything I did, okay. which is why I was scared yeah. of like talking to people. Sure. And so every little thing I did was like, damn, I'm going to be defined. Did you feel like you were more calculating? Mm. Yeah, as a result? Always, yeah. always. When did that stop for you, or when did you chill? Still more? going, okay, still okay, going, gotcha. but okay, like okay. much less. Okay, and okay. and I choose my battles now. Sure, sure you sure. know. Okay. So so, but for me, like I uh, I remember um, I remember this one show specifically, and it was my first time opening for a big name artist. It was Tom Odell. Okay. And so I found out that I was opening for Tom Odell like five days before it happened, and I had reached out to to, to try to make it sure. happen. Shout out to Live Nation. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we made it happen and uh, I was actually booked doing something else and I had to like take time away from that to do it, obviously. Sure. And so <clears throat> didn't really get that much time to rehearse, but that was, that worked in my favor because I didn't have time to like overthink it. Yeah. So when I arrived, I just did this thing, you know, and up until then, I was always playing music as, as a guitar player mm -hmm. who happened to sing. Gotcha. But the type of songs that I was playing on that show, there wasn't just, there wasn't a lot of guitar. Was your voice always as good as it is now? Like, I mean, obviously I'm sure you started somewhere, but were you, was there a switch where you were like talking lower? Like, was there a switch for you? I don't know, to be honest. I think, I think I just like, 
you know when you're driving and you're just singing yeah sometimes you just start to feel like there's a certain resonance yeah, yeah. it's it's tightening up yeah it's, yeah it's, so it's for me there. i always i i for I, I remember like and i know no one's ever asked me that question by the way the thing for me was like i felt this resonance mm. from my throat to my ears on the lower register and it clicked yeah and i was just like that doesn't sound like crap mm. right let's yeah, start yeah. from there yeah so i started there and then you know started to build the confidence sure, to hit the higher sure, notes sure. and stuff yeah, like yeah, that yeah, yeah. um yeah who, who were you emulating as a singer or uh, a little bit of coldplay yeah. uh the uh, also catatonia okay uh the singer from catatonia really inspired me yeah, yeah. so um and just a lot of different singers you know james arthur sure. and, and stuff like that so james is incredible man. unbelievable i did a show with him Woo. unbelievable he's insane he's absolutely insane <laughs> yeah, yeah. so so um i actually got the opportunity to open for him as well yeah, um yeah. so so with the tom adele show i remember that when um before the show started i was i was nervous because i wasn't nervous i was like this is strange i'm normally freaking out at this point like it's minutes to the show yeah, yeah. and i'm just like i i don't say i can't say i don't care but it's sort of like let it be i i, I went through when i used to perform mm. i used to go through something similar uh, speaking of butterflies, what's your kind of pre-show ritual or how do you experience these? But I want to hear, hear about your story first. So for me, again, when talking about being nervous, I started performing at a relatively young age as an actor. Mm. I caught the bug as an actor, you know, summer camp. So like acting. theater and stuff? Well, it wasn't exactly theater. It was like once every three, three gotcha. years theater. Yeah. But like, like I was fully immersed. You yeah. know what I mean, like I believe that, you know, one of the early shows I, I participated in it, and is Peter and the Wolf. Okay. And I was Peter. Okay. In my mind, you couldn't tell me I wasn't climbing a tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you I lived it. it. I lived yeah. it. Mind you, I was too young to have any, you know, worry. What Inhibitions. Anyone, and, it, yeah. Anything. Nothing held me back. So I caught that, the, yeah. the feeling of performing, and I, yeah, I, I really yeah. enjoyed it. So fast forward 15 years or whatever, when I opened uh, for, I think it was Shaggy no, or oh, 98 Degrees, whatever, one of my nice. first shows. Nice. I felt nervous not before I got on stage, two, exactly two days before. It's like, okay, so if it's Wednesday night, the show is on Friday. Yeah. Wednesday night is where it hits me. I can't sleep. I'm like, not, <laughs> not afraid, but I'm like- You're kind hungry of, for it. Yeah, I'm going through it. Th Thursday, I'm totally fine. Friday, I'm good. Up until about two minutes before it's time to go on stage. And I'm like, it's cool. And the second I step in, I'm like, this is where I belong. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. I, 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 I ask that because everyone obviously has a different- yeah. Some people are literally crippled. Yeah. You'd be surprised how many household names like have stage fright, yeah, um, and, and they develop it later, yeah. which is fascinating. Not in a good way. It's just yeah. like it, it's weird how it can click, yeah. you know. So I'm just wondering what kind of your process has been or is or. I mean, I like to isolate. I mean, yeah. I you know my brother performs with me now, so we. Yeah, what it, does he play? He he plays the keys, okay. and he's actually picking up the guitar as well right nice. now. So. Um, does he do any backing vocals? He or? does. He actually okay. sings on pressure with me oh, and nice. a couple nice. other songs nice. as well. So, cool. um, so in a way, he takes a little bit of that pressure off of me somehow. Yeah. Um, without it get, it knowing, gets spread. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It gets divided a little bit, <laughs> sure, channeled sure, a little sure. bit. And so, one of my really good friends, Brendan, is always with us in the shows. Mm -hmm. He's shot some music videos for nice. me, and he shoots some behind the scenes. Your stuff so, is really good, by the way. Thank you. I, I, thank I you. saw quite a bit of. Yeah, them, thank you. Thank yeah. you. I appreciate well that. Well done. So, um, so I I like to keep quiet, like. Outside of this circle of whoever is involved in making the show happen, I tend to not want to talk to anybody just yep. because I'm running through like, I don't know if you've experienced that before, but when performing, but you're always running your monologues, right? Like, when do I thank the organizer? Mm. When do I, when is a good time to introduce a story? When do I not say anything, just go into the next song? The funny part is you can plan that, but it yeah. <laughs> goes by so Throw quick, you're like... It's well, over already. Like, yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. so you say you're going to do all these yeah, yeah, things yeah. and then you're like, I'm three songs into it. And like, yeah. how did I get here? Just, just out the window, <laughs> out the window completely. It's yeah. a blur. Yeah. And it's just, but you need something to keep your mind busy. Right? Oh, for sure. For yeah. sure. I usually try to zero in on, on either one single audience member. Yeah. You know, it's just to, to make that connection. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and, yeah. You know, I don't, have you forgotten lyrics to, to your own songs? Dude, I still do all the time, all the <laughs> you time. Know, you so, don't know where your mind yeah, wanders. Yeah. You're like trying to manage this whole thing. It's it's, it's, it's one of those things where it's like uh, if you're if you're on the bicycle and you start thinking about how to ride a bicycle, you fall yeah, apart. Yeah, absolutely, because your mind knows what to do. But like, so a couple of my songs, I actually stumble through the lyrics 
and I've done it numerous times. And How it's do you the same recover? song. How do you recover? I don't. I just like lose sleep over it. Did, <laughs> you, know? that, 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 you pay yeah, the tax later. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's gone. Right. <laughs> and sometimes people don't notice. Yeah. yeah. But um, how do you recover? Do you have like kind of go tos? Like, mm -hmm. well, <laughs> everybody like. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so like I do this thing, okay, and I, I hope this doesn't ruin future shows. Yeah, but yeah, like yeah. sometimes, if uh, you know, with the quieter songs, mm. you can sort of stumble your way away from the mic yeah, 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 yeah. and make it sound like you're part of like. Yeah, I'm like, emoting right now. Yeah, like the feeling is killing you. You can't finish the sentence. Yeah, yeah. That's me forgetting lyrics, yeah, yeah. right? So, um, but but also for the most part, I try to, um, because it becomes this timestamp in your head, right? Yeah, if you yeah. mess up a, a line in a song, it's like you're going there. You're you're slowly, the grid, like the line, the playhead. <laughs> you're seeing like the karaoke yeah, version yeah, yeah, yeah. with the ball bouncing. Yeah. And it's, <laughs> uh, it's very fastly approaching and you, you can see that stumble from yeah, before, yeah. but it's like trying to forget it and and, and all of that stuff. So, um, and I, like I perform a lot, like a lot of my songs on Twitch, you know, mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah. So, um, sometimes if I mess up a song and, uh, I'm about to play it again. I'm trying not to think about that previous experience, yeah, yeah. you know. So, uh, but yeah, pre-show ritual. I just try to take it easy. And in that in that specific concert with with the Tom Adele show, um, I performed as a performer in my like from my eyes sure. for the first time. Yeah. You know, um, I'm not gonna say it was the best show of all time because you know, again, I'm always I always look back at footage. I'm like, what could I have done better? You had arrived. You you felt like. I've earned this. Yeah, I'm here. It this was like it was like the next chapter. I, I know me. that feeling. 100%. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So after after the show was done, I remember walking off the stage, and my brother had, didn't perform with me at the time, but I remember him looking at me like I just killed it. Yeah. And and I I just looked at him and I was like, dude, I'm born to do this. And because before the show, the the thing that helped me feel calm is that listen, if I suck, I'll just find out. Right. Yeah, yeah. Like if you I get the feedback, yeah. Like if, if I'm not meant to do this, then they'll let me know because there's no one in the crowd. I mean, maybe two people knew me yeah. in the crowd, yeah. but everybody else didn't know me. It's funny you say that. I've got a little thing. My, yeah. my other best friend, Erica, we have this running joke where like a lot of my poses and my pictures, you know, it's the, can I be an artist? Look. <laughs> it's not, I'm an artist. It's, can I be an yeah, artist? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? The so, application. Yeah, yeah you're like, <laughs> you know, and, and, and the thing is you go through that doubt and, and, yeah. and I did for a long time and, 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 you know, not that I've reconciled it, but it's something that, you, that you're constantly yeah. battling. Uh, I don't want to call it the imposter syndrome, but you're like, am but I good it enough? Is, it is very much that you know, though. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Like, am I good enough? Uh, am I selling it right? Mm. Uh, is it organic? You're just asking yourself a million questions. Yeah which can cripple you, but yeah. it's just all part of the journey. I mean, you have two options yeah. at this, mm -hmm. like for me, this is how I think about it. Like I can either activate my brain, yeah. right? Or I can tell my fears, thanks a lot for trying to warn me, yeah. but we're just going to find out, right? Yeah. And there's this thing that like, I, I saw uh, an interview with Floyd Mayweather yeah. um, uh, Jr. And he was talking about how uh, Triple H mm -hmm. uh, was behind the, like backstage with sure. him before one of his fights. Yeah. And Triple H would would like just get up, like he's doing the get up, and and Floyd would be like, "Dude, just sit down." Mm -hmm. Like, and and he's like, "Are you sure?" He's like, "You know, I like you've got a fight coming up, don't you yeah. want to?" Yeah. He's like, "You know, I've done the work. I'm either gonna get my ass whooped or I'm gonna win. We're about to find out. Just yeah. chill." And that just struck me. That's wisdom right there. You know, it struck me yeah, because yeah, it's yeah. just like that's actually letting go and being yeah. in the moment. To refer back to that book, Big Magic Brothers yeah. Gilbert, I feel like I'm a walking <laughs> advertisement. <laughs> There's a huge section on fear. Mm. Fear doesn't go away. And you're no. like, you just have to have that conversation. You're like, listen, I'm driving this car. You're welcome to come along. You're going to yeah. be here whether I like it yeah. or not, but you're taking the backseat. Yeah. Yeah. We're, going, we're, we're going there together. I love that. I, I love how she framed it. Yeah. But but it's so true, man. And and I'm, I'm glad we're talking about this because a lot of artists whether they're singers or not, anyone in the creative field mm. or anyone for that matter. Anyone on through, display. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, or not on display. I right. mean, fear and, you know, like self-doubt. Mm. My mentor, uh, mix engineer, Dave Pensado. Arguably Legend. One, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, I remember I was, I assist, assisted him for a while. I think that was before we, we started Pensado's place. Mm. Um, he tells me, Zan, let me tell you about my day. Come in. You know, I usually would set up the board for him. It's yeah. like, I come in around 12 or 1. By three o'clock, I'm just rocking. By six o'clock, I feel like I'm God's gift to mixing. <laughs> By 11 p.m., I wonder if I'm going to have a job tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I the cannot highs and lows. tell you the weight that that lifted off my shoulders. I'm like, this is arguably one of the best doing what he does. You know what I mean? Like, he's yeah. he's a walking legend. Yeah. He has self-doubts. So I was like, man, I'm fine. I am totally fine. Yeah. 
And that really, really stuck so with me. So empowering, right? Absolutely. Because like you're like, you see... it comes, it's part of the process. It yeah. comes, it's, it, it's here with you. And the thing is like a lot of the times, uh, I think there's a lot of misconceptions with music and, and, and like performance and, and how things are happen and how they're made is because we see like what, 2% of the footage and we don't see like just before the band gets on stage and looks like they are gods. Yep. They're like literally crapping their pants yep. backstage. Yep. Just nobody's showing it, right? And the thing is, I don't know if you saw um, the Metallica S and M two concert. Yeah. Yeah. There's a video they put up of the behind the scenes, and it's Lars Ulrich yep. and and the rest of the band backstage. Mm -hmm. And Lars is freaking out. Like, and this is like last year, right, yeah. or the year before. Um, they've been doing this what like thirty plus years, and this he still gets freaked out. So. It's just like, when you see that, you're like, okay, I'm fine. Yeah, it's okay to be a little yeah, bit nervous. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So it just takes a little yeah, bit of that no, edge it, off. It's so true. It, again, it's all about perspective and mm. what lens, you know, if you're the, if you're the, you're, you're the audience, you're seeing it from that lens. Yeah. If you're the sound guy, you're seeing it from, yeah. there are so many angles to it. Yeah. Oh man. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Crazy. awesome. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about your songwriting process. Yeah. When did you write your first song? Was it easy? Was it tough? Um, I think, I think I started to write like very shortly after I picked up the guitar, mm -hmm. I was just doodling with some ideas, but lyrics started to come together very slowly, to be honest. Um, Are you melody first then lyrics or? Uh, I've, it's changed. Like I used to write more on the, like, let's finish the song song, like Lyric? musically. Oh, music. Musically. Okay. Yeah. Like every layer needs to be there gotcha, and then gotcha. we'll worry about lyrics. I see. But, but, but you'd have the structures, the vowels, the syllables and all that stuff? Sort of, sort of, but also it was kind of messy, right? Yeah. But right now, like through the years, I've sort of become more on the storytelling side mm -hmm. of just realizing that you don't really need to do that much That's musically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as you have a core story, just build from there instead of like trying to uh, squeeze a story into yeah, something yeah, yeah. that sounds nice as an instrumental. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So... Um, for me right now, it's just a bunch of notes on my phone with lyrics yeah, yeah, and right. ideas. And sometimes mm -hmm, it's one line. Yeah, sometimes it's yeah, a full thing. Yeah. And then um, sometimes they get and they end up getting used immediately. Yeah. Other times they sit in they my sit, emails yeah, and notes yeah. for years. How important is structure for you? Man, it's becoming more important now because I feel like I, I'm the kind of guy who tends to get bored if I do the same thing. So I'm trying to like push the envelope just to just so I'm like more excited about trying new creative abstract yeah. things within a very limited i mean you know what your Two, range three is minutes, yeah not just that listen every story has a beginning middle and yes an end. yes yes so there's something you need to adhere to yes it's like how can i be different within yeah, these yeah, yeah, limitations yeah. yeah yeah and the thing is there's also a feeling of flow and mm -hmm. truthfulness mm -hmm. to like writing sure. so if you try to force the idea of being different you're sometimes ruining yeah. what could be good, yeah, right? Yeah, so sometimes it's just about letting it happen. You got to quiet that voice. There's a time yeah. for it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it's all the phases that mm. you go through. Yeah, yeah. So, but like, I, for me, there's something that I've recently picked up and um, it's to, it's the idea of revisiting mm -hmm. things. Yeah. So a lot of the times, and I, I'd love to get your thoughts on that from the music perspective. I'm very impatient. Like when I get an idea, I just want to print it out and see it immediately. That immediacy is very important. Yeah, I want instant gratification. That I, I, I picked up from a very dear friend of mine. His name is Kai. You may not know the band. The, the, uh, Millie Vanilli was probably arguably one of the biggest kind of controversial yeah. stories with the lip syncing. So he wrote the hook for Girl You Know Is True, mm -hmm. which was one of the biggest songs. Nice. And so I, I worked with him on a lot of songs and he was very big on the second you catch the vibe, because it, 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 it can't, it's a fleeting, it, it could yeah. literally come and go. He would like, even if it's not perfect, and I can't tell you the number of sessions we did where when we caught it, and then we'd go to re-record it, it lost something. Yeah. Even though technically on almost every level, it was better. Yeah. But there was just something that yeah. came with the idea at that time, that immediacy, irreplicable. You, you yeah. just cannot, you it, know, so. It's, there's a feeling tagged to the absolutely, performance absolutely. or. And mind you, I'm a, I've been working on being a perfectionist and stuff. I'm less so of a perfectionist, but it, it still runs in me. So the more I let go of it being as good as yeah. it can be immediately and letting the process kind of take over, um, A, it's more comforting. I can get a lot more done. But it, man, it's it's a constant push-pull. Yeah. But I mean, I think for me, like what I'm trying to sort of get to a little bit slowly is that my first idea doesn't have to be the best. It doesn't. You know what I mean? So like I could, like one of the songs on the new album, uh, Blood and Water, mm -hmm. I rewrote that a lot actually. And um, 
like the like musically it sort of just happened yeah and i started building it like sort of like lego pieces yeah and um but lyrically i went back and forth a lot and this is something i picked up watching mike shinoda's stream on twitch because mm -hmm. i see that i see how uh, he doesn't take things personally in yeah. the way he creates within himself. Yeah. And for me, it's like, I always had that struggle of like thinking that these great artists come up with things out of thin air yeah. always. Yeah. And it's just like a vending machine. Absolutely. And it's like, in the end was just created like in five minutes. That's what separates the pros from the amateurs. Yeah. You can do it on, de on, on demand. Yeah. Um, that discipline is not easy, right? But yeah. like you said, it you put in the reps and those guys that you idolized, you know, Floyd Mayweather, yeah. Mayweather Jr., for instance. Like, I've done the training. Yeah. This is just a matter of showing yeah. up. I've got this whole theory. You know, you've heard the showing up is half the battle. In yeah. my mind, showing up is the battle. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you might not always get something good, but showing up, you're far more likely to have something come out than yeah. not sitting. 100%. So that, that discipline, all that yeah. comes in. But, but to your point, it also depends who you're targeting. I, yeah. I was talking about John Mayer, about, you know, John Mayer as a singer. Yeah. The guy is like... Einstein on one end musically, theory and all that stuff. And then he's as cheesy pop as you can yeah. if he wants to be. Yes, yes, yes. But what he does better than anyone else I've heard, even though I resisted it for a while, he'll write a song that will impress both the super scholar mu mu musical types yeah. and the super, like, I just want to listen to like lowest common yeah. denom denominator. It's stuff. very accessible, but also it's very complicated. And I love that because he doesn't have that hang up where most jazz artists, they go yeah. off the the... The deep end. Yeah. Again, every everything has an audience. Yeah, yeah, Every, of course, nothing of course. is better than. Of course. You can't tell me this is better than that, especially when it comes to taste. Yeah. So that, that that's why I say it really depends on on kind of what the end product. Are you selling it to someone? Are you trying yeah. to make art? Is this something that's going to go into a museum, or is it something that's going to be consumed yeah. here today, gone tomorrow? Yeah. I think that dictates how much effort. Look, you could always rewrite, right? And that's what separates the good from the greats. You know, yeah. sometimes it's done. It's knowing, listen, the hardest thing as a creator, knowing when to lift that pen. Yeah. Like, it's done. There's a, there's a thing Mike Portnoy from Dream Theater, mm -hmm. uh, X Dream Theater said, he said, uh, a record is never finished, it's abandoned. And I'm a strong believer in that because you can always sit and tweak and tweak and tweak and tweak. And you can add, you can take away, you can yeah. change, you can, I mean. You just have to let go, basically. And this is probably, this has been said ad nauseum, but deadlines is what dictates yeah it. without a deadline 100 percent. what did they say uh, um a goal is a, a dream without a deadline mm. you know what i mean so deadline sometimes is the thing that gets you to finish yeah. and you're like okay if i didn't get it on this one i'll get it on the next yeah. one i'm guilty of saying no 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 this still needs work it's, yeah, yeah it's just yeah. not there <laughs> guess what there's a good chance it's never gonna get that you know and the thing is sometimes i feel like it has to do with where i'm at and the time yeah, and place sure. like my skill set right now if i work on a song over the next week, two weeks, three months, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I still am the same guy, skill set wise. So, but but also within, I, I feel like, especially with this, with this new collection of songs that I've made, there is a layer of like, can it be better, right? And sort of gauging like, okay, I guess it's done now. Like I'm, I've poked it too much. What you know do you what compare I mean? it to? Like when you say better, obviously there's always more you can do, but is it, are, are you comparing it against something else you've done, something else you're hearing? What's it's, kind of it's the, the, the feeling? The, so, the, like okay. for me, it's like how it I, makes you feel. When yeah. You're done. So yeah. it's like if I hit play, I want to close my eyes and I want to feel the same thing throughout, or like an elevation of that. Go somewhere, right? Yeah. But if, if somewhere the heartbeat stops, yeah, then we have a problem. The problem with it, I, I agree with you 100. percent I've had songs where like it gave me that feeling one time. I mm. listened to it and then I listened to it again. It's so mood yeah. dependent. It, are you in a good, did you sleep well? Did you eat well? Because like yesterday, I got lost in the song. And today I'm like, this is the worst song yeah, ever. Yeah, it's yeah, the same yeah, song. Yeah. But the thing is, do you show your, your pieces to like close friends and stuff? Yeah. I, I, my Going back to my brother, he, he's he got a, a like just a sick ear for good stuff. And he, he's called out, one of the first songs I ever wrote was a very simple song. Mm. Again, not to say that the most complex, et cetera, but it was a simple song that I'd written maybe in 10, 15 minutes, and he loved it so much. It wasn't clubby enough for the clubs. This is 94, right? right. He took it to every single club in Washington, D.C. to try to get it played because he believed in it that much. I don't know how much the fact that I'm his brother you gotcha. know, was a factor, but he felt like it had juice, right? And a lot of people are like, it's a good song, but like, okay, so you know how things usually go on a four-beat cycle? This yeah. was a six. Oh, nice. Which, 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 which I wasn't trying it. 
trying mm. for it mm. to be a six measure loop or repeat. It just naturally. And so a lot of DJs will tell them, I can't mix that. So either they weren't musically inclined to know that you just wait for the repeat. Yeah. It, it's the same beat. It's, it does it was loop nothing. at yeah, some yeah, yeah. point. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And it's on a grid, et cetera. It's yeah. not like, it's a 4-4 four, four song. It's not yeah. like you're doing. 13 it, over 8 or <laughs> something like that. Yeah. So, <laughs> and, and it just didn't have the punch because I didn't know much of, or anything about mixing. But he tried so hard to, you know, bless his heart. But but a testament to what he heard. Fast forward maybe two three years. I remember I was taking a course with my my dad was teaching a, a communications mm -hmm. uh, course at George Mason. One of the students comes in humming the song. I'm like, that's a, some sort of sick joke. I thought maybe my dad played it for her. Or whatever. She comes in, she's singing the song. I'm like, you know, that's my song. She's like, no, that's my song. She thought I was saying, like, I love this song. Oh, <laughs> you know, I'm like, it's my jam. Yeah, 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 exactly. She's like, that's my jam. She's like, I love it. And she sings it. She's like, the words. I'm like, no, listen, I sing so you the song. you had it released already, right? But released, we can get more into yeah. what release meant at that time. But I'm like, no, no, you don't understand. It's my song. I sing it. She's like, I sing it too. <laughs> God so damn it. It's, I created it. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, no, no listen, listen, slow down. I created this song. Yeah. She's like, shut up. Yeah. And when she found out, she like flipped. Nice. Talk about the most random. I mean, yeah. look, it doesn't matter. It's a pure moment. But, but there was a truth about, and going back, yeah. so I do have a support system. I, I trust my my, my, yeah. my my brother blindly with anything. He can hear it. And I have a, you know, I'm, I'm lucky, you know, I can play things for Dave. I can play for people who are either veterans or. Yeah. I, you I can really borrow trust. their ear. Yeah, for, for sure. Yeah. For sure. So that helps a lot, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But usually the feeling that I'm telling you about doesn't necessarily have to have gone through that filter yeah. for me to either feel like, yeah, it's there or it's not, you know. There's songs I love that I just love for me, yeah. regardless of how it may or may not perform. Yeah, you know? so, yeah. I mean, sometimes you just have to let it go. But like, you know, I guess the from a songwriter's perspective, there's sometimes there is a little bit of a blueprint. Like, yeah. I want to write a song that just that's not, that has the catchy vibe, sure, sure, sure. right? So it's like you send yourself out on a mission. You try a few. Like, this is what I do. I try a few different ones something sticks out and and with me it's always my my brother danny he's he's like my uh my partner in crime when it comes to we both got good yeah, brothers yeah. <laughs> he's my partner in crime because he's always like you know we're always being creative mm -hmm. in the same space sure. and so a lot of the times when uh i do this thing sometimes and i did it with uh, my song drown that was on my first mm -hmm. uh my, my debut op uh chapter one and so what i did is i worked on drown when he wasn't there he was out and about and I was just like, I'm going to wait for him to get home. I have a feeling about this song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to tell him I'm working on something. You want validation yeah, from someone I just want to play it. And if he continues on his day without As if turning, nothing happened, yeah. yeah, then this song is terrible, mm. right? So I played it and he just stopped. He's like, what the fuck is that? Mm. So I knew that that sort of reaction yeah, yeah, yeah. is good. That's real. That's, like, real. that's, that's yeah, good. Yeah. And so, so a lot of times I'll show him an idea I'll be like, yeah, that's, that's, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't want to hurt my feelings. You can tell, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah and I'm yeah. just like, okay, that's going in a, yeah. uh, you know, mm -hmm. either revisit it or just not getting visited again. So having that, that having that is very important because sometimes you can come up with something that sounds terrible yeah. to you, but it's got magic in it. And other times you think it's the best thing of all time. For sure. And it's got nothing. Listen, if we ever got to a point where we could know, it'd be game over. I, yeah. I think part of it is... I mean, sometimes you feel like something is special, but mm. it may not perform as well as you thought. And sometimes mm. you're like, it's a good song. And then it way outperforms. Like it just far exceeds your expectations. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I've heard countless stories with, you know, big names and, you know, where it's like, I wrote this song, like, and suddenly hundreds of millions of people sing it. I think it's like Sweet Child, Sweet Child of Mine was done that way, That's, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, countless, literally. Yeah. There, there are so many examples of that. Yeah. Um, let's get into... Kind of your body of work. It sounds yeah. like you've released some EPs. Yeah. Are you more an EP slash project and albums guy, or where, more, where do singles kind of fit into? More that on whole... the singles side. Okay. So, so for me, recent or always, always. I mean, I guess I've started releasing music in 2018. Mm -hmm. Um. So the first single came out. That's so impressive, man. That, yeah. Thank that you. You haven't been doing it that long, but man, you sound every bit as good as like the top. I'm so impressed with the amount of talent that exists in Dubai, but I'm also sad because, especially for non-Arabic singers, mm. uh, we'll, we'll get more into yeah, this. Yeah, Sorry, yeah, I, yeah. I, I didn't want to cut you um, off. I mean, I, I've done some stuff before, mm. right? But never really released it. Like, you know, I had Ocean, uh, one of my songs, I, I uploaded it on YouTube like in mm -hmm. 2015, 2016, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but never officially released it, yeah. right? Um, my plan at the, time, at the time was to just have it to sort of see if people would react positively to it. Yep. And then maybe because it's not officially released, release it with a record label. Yeah. So um, 
And for me, I uh, started releasing in 2018. Mm -hmm. Invincible was the first song. Yeah. It was like, you know, a, uh, like a like a happy pop song. A very good song. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, it's very fun to play live. And then, so just did singles, 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 singles. For me, an album is something that I n hate the idea of. I don't like making albums because I just want to just get it done, release it, get it done, release yeah. it. I'm yeah. like, you know, I want to be active on the singles front. But like sometimes you get stories that need it belongs in a body of work yeah. and, and plus especially because of who you said you idolize or like yeah it's easier to like a lot of people we were talking off air about mm. you know being signed or getting signed or whatever yeah. the case might be there's an idea of what you know you're not legit until yeah so let's say you listen to to uh, an album's heavy band yeah guaranteed you live with the i want to make an album yeah it's just because your your, your point of reference condition sort of that way sure yeah. so I, I like that of late, more artists realize how how detrimental an album could be. Yeah. We're we're in a singles environment right now, and not I don't see that ending anytime soon. No. Attention and spans songs are, are getting shrinking. Shorter, yeah, right? of course, of yeah. course. And I love that. Yeah. Uh, and again, genres are, are, are you know disappearing and and all that. Yeah. But what I I do like a lot about your work. Thank you. Is it's not afraid of also appealing to the masses. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're not into because a lot of people have had this conversation or debate about whether something has commercial appeal or pop yeah people unfortunately a lot of people equate pop with less than or like yeah. oh that's like easy, it's like a stigma it's to it chewing gum yeah yeah it's like man if it's singable if it's memorable that's not a bad thing i mean you know? i want more people to like my songs right some people are like no i want three people to like it yeah. like okay no good good for you yeah i mean for me i like i like a lot of uh indie vibes uh -huh. yeah. a lot yeah but also i love you know, the Maroon Fives and the Bruno Mars and all of the top 40 yep, yeah, hits, yeah, yeah. right? I, I love that music. I love, I love obsessing over why a song is good. Like, why is it stuck in my head? Same boat. You know, I, like, what is the science behind mm -hmm. it? I try to break it down. I'm, and you I'm can't, the same. Yeah. you can't. It's just, there's something, something I mean, out there. Th th there are common threads, but like, again, sure. going back to the point, if it was reputable, everybody would be doing it. Yeah. Even the best of them find difficulties and say, yeah. okay, this worked. Let's do it again. It'll work. Yeah. Sometimes that works. Most times it doesn't. Yeah, I mean, but the thing is, having that hunt in your in your mind, I guess, activates certain things sure, that make you sure. create better things. That seeking, it, yeah. I think, the act of seeking is almost more important than what, like, good luck. The, the journey, the is, journey. Uh, yeah, 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 better I mean, than the that's destination. Been, that's been beaten down. But, I, I believe, I believe in that so much. But like for me, I again, uh, chapter one was an album that I wrote mm -hmm. uh, that was in, out in 2019. Mm -hmm. It was a story about um, uh, uh, like a very difficult relationship that mm -hmm. I had and uh, just a lot of uh, the toxicity coming off of that and, you know, uh, trying to get over that and, and ideas of like not hurting yourself to sure. want to be with someone yeah. or make something work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, it's been um, it's been single, single, singles up until now. Um, as of today, it'll be six days until the release. Yeah. I think when the episode comes the out. The release of this, yeah. tan, 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 this is a big deal. This yeah. is not something that should go unnoticed. Yeah, yeah. So, so Tell me more. Tell us more. All right. So Clarity comes out June 17th. Yeah. Uh, Clarity is an album uh, where the title track is produced by Mike Shinoda from Linkin Park and Fort Minor, yeah. which is uh, insane to, to, to even say. We'll get into how you guys connect. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. So um, uh, basically, I can tell you the story of how it happened because it tells the story of how the record yeah, came I'd together. Love to, I'd love to hear it. Um, so in, in uh, January of uh, this year, um, Mike Shinoda on his Twitch channel, I've been streaming on Twitch since last June, by the way. Yep. So um, uh, he announced that he wanted to produce songs uh, by artists that were brought forward to him by his uh, community. Mm -hmm. um, and so he called it the AN Army. So smart. Right? Mm -hmm. And so under the hashtag Shinoda Produce Me, um, he came up with the idea and when I found out about this, you know, I've been frequenting Mike Shinoda's streams for a very yeah, long time. Yeah, he's yeah. he's one of my idols. Literally, the reason why I became a musician. Yeah. So, um, isn't that great that you can? It's insane. Point that out. Yeah, it's and insane. now you get to, you get to work with him. It's insane. It's insane. So, so for me, what happened was uh, I had just finished a stream, um, and. But by the time I finish streams, it's usually towards either the half or depending on daylight savings, yep. halfway through or towards the end of Mike's, uh, Mike Shinoda's streams. So How long are they usually? My streams are like four hours. Yep. His is like two hours. Okay. So I I just, I was like, you know what? Let's check what's happening on Mike's. Like I just finished. Let's see what's happening. Yeah. I literally log in and he start talking about this. Yeah. And then um, I, I went over to my brother uh, and I was like, do you think I should 
like do something. And he was like, yeah, I mean, you could, you, you know, got nothing to lose. Yeah, yeah. Like, why not? So literally as I was listening to Mike talk about this, yeah. I plugged everything in. I mean, I, everything was plugged in, but like I switched yeah, yeah. all the software back on and all of that. And I recorded Clarity, yeah. which is a song that I wrote two years ago. Okay. And I could not for the life of me produce it. I did, couldn't. Did it belong in that first chapter or was it a standalone? No, no, no. It was like a, just a song I wrote okay. and I tried pr producing it. It's a song about mental health mm -hmm. and yeah. literally yeah. written during an anxiety attack. Okay. Okay. Um, and so... I've been performing it live just as an acoustic song mm -hmm. with my brother mm -hmm. and stuff for the last few shows uh, before COVID hit. And um, I was that's the first song that came to mind. So I was like, okay, uh, what I'm going to do is before the stream ends, this video is going to be on Twitter yeah. and Instagram and everywhere. Yeah. And I've got my community, the inner circle that yeah. I've been building over, sure. over the last while, members from all over the world. Shout out to everybody from yeah. the inner circle. Yeah, I love yeah, you guys. Yeah. And um, a lot of people from Mike Shinoda's community also come over to my streams. Mm -hmm. And so... What I did was I uploaded it, used the hashtag, and I just asked everybody, even just, people following, like a lot of my friends as well, um, share, 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 share. And so... Um, Talk about engagement, man. Yeah, that's, it's crazy. That's awesome. Yeah, so so cutscene, this was, I think, Monday. Cutscene to Thursday, right? Of the same week. Same week. Um, again, just finished the stream. And I wasn't really thinking much of it. I mean, I was thinking a lot of it, but like... But you put it out there. You put it out there. And I was like, you know what? In my head, I'm just like battling. Like, is he going to see it? Is he gonna, like, is he going to like it? Is he going to hate it? Yeah. What if Mike Shinoda sees it and hates my voice and that's going to crush me? Like, you know, I'm yeah. just thinking about all those things. You're in your head at this point. Yeah. So like, again, I just finished a stream. It was Thursday. It was like around 10, 30 PM. And then I, my phone starts blowing up, like just messages, messages from yeah. people. And they were telling me that Mike was watching my video at that point. So I log into Mike's stream and he was trying to he was trying to see if I was in the chat mm. and, um, and then I basically answered and people started telling Mike, Yo, Listen, he's, don't he's, move on. He's yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. So he grabs his phone and he texts me on Twitter yeah. and it's just, this sounds like a dream. Like what I'm telling you right <laughs> yeah, now, it really sounds like an yeah, out of body I, experience. I, I, I've, I've experienced this. So I know the feeling. Yeah. And so like, for me, the main thing, like, obviously there, there's a couple of uh, crazy things here. One is that he saw something that he, liked for him to want to work with me um that means the world to me yo listen with without going any further your voice is a one second listen thank you man it doesn't take three <laughs> thank you if by two seconds you're not hooked you're not gonna get hooked thank you thank you thank it's you that I appreciate that. it's that. really i that really good. really truly mean, means a lot to me thank you and the other thing for me was this came together because of the power of community mm. which when i got into music as a serious thing this is my dream like for me i can write Let's say I, you know, inshallah, knock on wood, yeah. I get, uh, you know, uh, billboard chart singles, a top blah, 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 all of that, top hits and stuff. If I don't have people to share it with, Doesn't matter. it's just going to be paper thin. Dave told me something very important. Yeah. If you want to be a singer, don't do it because you want the fame and all that. I mean, that's mm. all nice. But if you don't sing because you would sing, whether one person was listening or a billion, you shouldn't sing. Yeah. And it's clear it, in having that community, you have people who are, thirsting for what you have to release. Yeah. So you've got that one-to-one -one relationship, yeah. which is amazing because that's where we are today. Before there were gatekeepers, you had to go through a certain process. It yeah. was so closed off. Yeah. You didn't have access. The access that most artists have now is unprecedented. Yeah. It's unparalleled. I cannot stress enough the importance of that one-to-one -one relationship you yeah. have with your, your fans because yeah. Man, they will lift you. And the thing is, it's not for me. It's not like a fan to artist sort of relationship. It's uh, it's it's a it's a very special connection that goes beyond yeah, that. Hey. And for me, it goes beyond the music. I feel like the music is just sort of a thing it's that's a vehicle. part of it. Yeah, yeah. Right. It it definitely inspires and moves it in a lot of ways. But also, there's a lot of like, you know, we talk a lot about mental health. We mm -hmm. talk if someone's going through something from the community. There's a there's a lot of Sharing. there's a lot of togetherness, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So um. That to me is That's just so rich, man. It, I love that. You know, like yeah. that to me is is like it just keeps me keeps me going, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would write songs either way. I got to be honest with you because yeah, yeah. I love I love making things. But this having this as uh, like a prime purpose, uh, it just the connection is very strong, yeah. right? So so the fact that this happened, um, and when Mike saw my video. He said, I know we have a lot of Hadi fans here and you guys want us to do something together. That's awesome. Just hearing that is just like, you know, it just makes me want to grab everybody from he the community. He knows yeah, I exist. He knows my name. He said my name, you know? So just, just hearing that, I want to grab everybody from the community and just give them a hug. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Everyone from Mike's community and mine That's and everyone incredible. who shared it. So I'm very, very grateful for it. And uh, uh, for me, it's uh, just like a thing from the bucket list. 
And uh, I want to continue to do more and more things. I'm always thinking about the next big thing and, yeah, the, yeah. and the next big thing. And so um, not to drift off too far from okay. it, uh, you know, uh, so basically when that happened, uh, Mike announced that this was going to happen, that I'm gonna, that he's going to work with me on Clarity. Mm -hmm. And then we started talking. He wanted me to reapproach the vocals uh, and just sort of open up a bit more, sure, sure, sure. Uh, say the words with more clarity. Uh, did, did the structure <clears throat> change at all? No, uh, he added one part towards the end, just sort of like a tail end to the mm -hmm, song. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, it was there. Yep. Um, and uh, I think he added something to the intro, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but so when, when we spoke about that, I obviously was working you yeah, know, yeah, immediately yeah, to yeah. get stuff mm -hmm, out. Mm -hmm. And then... There was no announcement of when the recording it was, was going to happen, yeah. right? So I was just sort of waiting. And I literally couldn't sleep for like two, three weeks. I swear, I'm not even kidding. Like I started I listening to hypnosis yeah, tapes yeah, yeah, in yeah. order to sleep. I was just so, so pumped and yeah, yeah. scared and just all sorts of the feelings. I think that's know? a high you can't reach any other way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, so it was kind of exciting. It was very, very exciting. Yeah. And so come February, I was like, all right. So early Jan... Mike and I spoke about this happening. When had you guys first connected? Uh, like very early, first week of Jan, second week of Jan. Of this year. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And so come February, I was like, all right, there's a lot of heavy, heavy doubt in my mind. Mm. There's a lot of mean things that my brain is saying towards me. Yeah. And this hasn't happened yet, uh, the thing with Mike. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to use this time to start writing. And I just felt this tug inside me. Like yeah. It's like someone was telling me, dude, write please write songs right yeah, yeah, and yeah. i just started writing 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 and so underdog was the first song uh that came up after clarity that's on the record and blood and water was the second one when i heard the title underdog i hope that's an anthemic like i hope maybe it's not but it's, i'll show but, it to you off the air okay, after, okay, okay. after, yeah, after yeah. i'll show it to you off the yeah. air um so uh there's a lot of things on this album that i've never done before for yeah, me so yeah. it's like it's fun you know, and I hope people people enjoy that. I, I I can't sit and say, oh, you guys can't wait to like, I can't hype it up because I don't know if it's going to connect or not, but it feels true to me and it feels fun. You have to start there. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, um, so for, uh, so, so these songs started to come together and then it went from like, when is Mike going to do it to, I hope he gives me one more week because I feel like I have an album that's yeah. sort of shaping up on its own. Um, that started after you guys connected. Yeah. 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 So I had three other songs that I've been performing on my Twitch channel mm -hmm. that I've never released. They were songs that I wrote and kind of liked, but kind of felt like, you know, I'm sure you relate. Yeah. Like they're finished, but also yeah, yeah, are yeah. they? You know what I mean? So so I started performing them and the community gravitate, gravitated towards them. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. there was a lot of push for me to release them, and uh, which was very inspiring. Mm -hmm. So they're on the record as well. They're titled In the Stars, Lunar and Dark. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the other tracks are all completely new. Um, and there's a lot of... There's a lot of uh, mental health, brain rewiring sort of things. Yeah. Um, not to get too uh, too deep, I guess, maybe. I, I, maybe it's too late by now because we've already gone deep. Dig in, dig in. Dig in. <laughs> but like, honestly, towards um, the beginning of the year, it, it, it was a very dark, dark time for me. Especially after the thing with Mike Shinoda happened, I think there was a lot of pressure of like, do you deserve this? Are you worthy? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of that. And... Um, you know, are you up to the task? Uh, a lot of these things. And so I was a little bit overwhelmed um, because there was a lot of silence after the like major announcement and then nothing. Yeah. And, you know, it, it obviously worked out for the for, for, for the highest and best because I was going to face these demons at some point. So at least I had an opportunity, yeah. that window to do yeah, it yeah. Where, yeah. It's, where it was quiet. Yeah. So a lot of, a lot of like, uh, you know, just struggle internally. So mm -hmm. a lot of that came out on some of the songs and, it was a little bit of a cathartic. Do you feel like you captured it properly? That does it feel appropriately? I don't feel as heavy anymore. Okay, I mean, well that's good. Yeah. That's so good. so I hope people connect with yeah. uh, with these songs the way that you know mm -hmm. that I I did when I, when I was yeah. creating them. So there was a lot of um, a lot of that stuff. What kind of songs do you write about? Like what kind of themes? It varies, honestly. Um, you go into like mental health and stuff like that. I, I haven't. I've never done that. It's usually intro introspective. Mm. Nostalgia like is dreamy, big. ambient. Not necessarily. Not it can be vague sometimes, mm. but in general, I feel like my common thread is connection. Mm. Um, I've written several songs about not feeling connected or grounded. Gotcha. So if there's a common thread at all, if you peel the layers, it feels to like just wanting to belong. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like nice. um, I'd say that's probably the common thread. So like but, someone in life and uh, yeah. or a place or a home. I mean, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I, having moved around as much as I did, 
home is where I am today. Yeah. Right? And to come to grips with, with that took me forever. You know, yeah. I lived in the States for 27 years. Right. As much as I love it, it doesn't feel like home. Yeah. France, where I grew up 10 years, is the closest to home, but it's mm. not home. Mm. I'm originally from Syria. That's not home. Yeah. My parents are home. They, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Again, all I ever wanted was to feel like I'm one of you guys. You know what yeah, I mean? So, yeah. Um, I, I've mentioned this before. Do you know Dead Mouse, the, the yeah, DJ? Course, so yeah. St Steve Duda, the guy that introduced me to Joel. Yeah. Uh, I remember that's someone whose opinion I, I really care about. I mean, Steve wrote uh, Serum. He, he's written yeah. many plug. He's he's a brain and a Crazy. half. And I was telling him, "What do you think of the stuff?" He's like, "Zan, I think your stuff is safe." And that was the biggest slap Damn. in the face. Damn. It's so tr listen, truth hurts like a motherfucker. Yeah. And I was like, first it was a hard blow. And I know he wasn't saying to be an asshole. He's super nice yeah. and very honest, et cetera. Yeah. But I was like, it takes care for someone to say that to you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. they really care for you and, if they and, say and that. He to does, you. he does. When he said that, I was like, the the sobering truth was, yeah, it's safe. Because he could easily take the exit route and be like, Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. No, no, no. But he's just like, it's cool, but it's good, it's good, but it's safe. Mm. I was like, God, he's so right. You know, and, and when I peeled the layers and got really underneath it, it's just like, because that's all I've ever wanted to be is safe. Like, yeah. you know, as much as I idolize a prince for being completely anti and doing his own thing, I, I would have loved to be that yeah. artist, yeah. but I could either couldn't be or didn't have the awareness yeah. that that's what it takes. You're like, do your thing and who cares? Like, that's a true art artistry. I mean, there's artistry in a lot of things, but yeah. if I were to, like say I'm switching channels. That's the channel I want to be watching. Right, 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 it's like right. someone who paved the way, who yeah. bulldozed, didn't care. Where I'm like, no, is this gonna? Who is this gonna offend? Yeah. I don't want to offend anybody. Yeah. And that 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 man, that was a, a that's tough. tough. Blow. But yeah. like after you let that simmer, right? Because the the first reaction is sort of like no, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a rejection. Yeah, to it, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right? And that's absolutely. natural. That's natural. That's absolutely. But but I I gauged it based on how hurt I was. Yeah. And I, and then I was like, I wouldn't be hurt if the because if someone's like, you suck, I'm like, I know I don't suck, whatever yeah, that yeah, yeah, sucking yeah. is, yeah. I'd be like, okay, yeah. I'm glad you, who cares? I don't yeah, care yeah, that yeah. you feel that way. But if someone's like, you're five foot eight. Yeah. Like, so? I mean, you know, those are like, like troll oh. comments, but like when someone says, uh, that's good, but can it be great? Yeah. And then they're like looking at you in the eyes. Yeah. It's because the thing is, I'll tell you something, the, the way I, I, mm -hmm. I, I approach it, right? If someone comes up to me and says, that's safe, right? What I hear is there's more to you that I see yes, that yes, you don't yes, realize. Ab absolutely. And, so like, get let that animal out. That's the sobering truth. That's yeah. what I'm saying. It's like, it, it, it hurt not because of what it, what it hurt because it reflected that I've been too chicken shit yeah. to just say, I don't care. And like, because I know, I mean, but, but also I don't that's like- that's not true. It's not chicken shit. <laughs> well, no, 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 but let me explain what I mean. Like, it, it's self-imposed yeah. fear. Like, again, the perfectionism, mm -hmm. like- Coming up with stories why you didn't work on something and did, didn't finish something. Oh, I moved around a lot. Okay, excuses, excuses. Yeah, 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 we yeah, yeah. all have them, right? But like, I never had the chance to make music full time. Yeah. And that haunts me to this day. And I'm working on changing that. Yeah. Hadi, I kid you not, I feel like I've only scratched the surface because yeah. I never had the opportunity to go full in. But yeah. I've been the reason why I, I haven't. So it hurts because all the programming, all the noise and stuff like yeah. that. So th th that's where it hit home yeah. for me. It's not the, like, it's the, like, get out of your own way and do what you know you yeah. can do very well, regardless of whether people like it or not. Yeah. But I know there's something in there that's scary. Like, and speaking of that, have you ever written or done something that scared you? You're like, because either it's so good or you're like, like, it literally gives you chills. Not in yeah. there like, oh my God, like, like, oh, what have I done? Yeah, yeah. I can't tell you the number of times that's happened to me, regardless of whether that would have would go on to do well or not but like it's the feeling you feel in the room when you're listening yes, or yes, creating yes, it yes, right yes, because yes. I, I i feel for me that uh there is i've definitely experienced the uh um be the good child yeah. be the good student be the like sit you know follow the follow the law follow yeah, yeah. the rules yeah, yeah. you know um and i don't mean law as, as yeah, a law yeah. but like yeah. you know the prescribed yeah, yeah. vision and the thing is the prescribed vision ends up being our assumption of the prescribed vision. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So like right now, um, a, a really good example of, of that, the way I process it is if you, if you look at a band that's trying to make a record to please its audience, if, if, if the fans are shouting, can you make the second album again? Yeah. If they make something exactly like the second yeah. album, the fans are going to say, 
man, it sounds like the second album. What the yeah. fuck? It, right? It's a lose lose. Yeah. <laughs> so like lose. the thing is, and that's not a diss on people, by the at way. All, it's because all. the people's excitement towards what you've created before is fucking amazing. The, the time, man, there's so many moving parts to that because let's say you come off of a La Vida yeah. co play and then you do something that's different. It, it has so much to do with how much the world is changing mm. around you, how much taste It's what you are, change. The, yeah, what the world yeah, is yeah. at that time. And it's like, at what point are you given creative license to like go super experimental? Like, and, and mm. then you've got label heads and ARs. No, 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 no. Keep it here because it won't perform. And then you've got the artist and you're saying, but this is really cool and different. Yeah. So you're trying to appease and like, that's a really when tough thing to solve trying for. To, when you're, for me, what I've realized is when I'm trying too hard to think about what a lot of people want and anything in my life, by the way, whether it's music or outside, yeah. I end up doing things that aren't inspired yeah right yeah, yeah, yeah. so for me in order for me to create things that i that i that feel right i have to actually isolate myself from everything because yeah. again people will maybe um like if there's a certain fan base for a band and personally i haven't experienced this like like i've gotten a lot of really great support and also because i haven't i'm not really like an a-lister just yet, hopefully. You sound like one. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So you. But like, like for me, I don't feel like maybe if there was a like if there was a massive audience, you end up getting a lot more trolls as that like and a lot more people who listen. Uh, when you're a millionaire, you have a millionaire or a million dollar problems. Yeah. So your problems or or they don't worries, go away. They just change. It, it, exactly. Yeah. So you, you are wherever you are. Yeah. Not how high or how low. You're X. You're here. Yeah. So your worries, your everything is tuned around that yeah. and it will adjust accordingly. Yeah. Either the, the volume gets turned up or it gets turned down. So, yeah. but, it, but also like I've realized that a lot of it has to do with your relationship with yourself absolutely. internally. Yes. So like if you, um, for me, I've noticed that the more self-love I'm able to allow, the more people are, the more I it invite people it in translates. to show love towards what I do. Absolutely. It's a little mind blowing. Th that was the switch for me. And I feel like maybe it's an age thing, maybe again, a sign, because there was an event that it's a singular event that, mm. that changed me. I, I lost my, my, my son, my dog, oh. um, two years ago. And it I'm was, sorry about that. thank you. Um, it, it, it completely turned everything upside down. I mean, it's almost Moses going up to the mountain, coming back. Mm. It was that transformational yeah. for me. Talk about self-love, talk about reflecting and, and putting things in perspective. That to me was very, very, very pivotal. Mm. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm a lot more at peace with things and my approach. And things flow that much more as yeah. a result. You know yeah. what I mean? So it, it's all internal. <laughs> Look, you are both your, your, your best fan and your worst enemy yeah. all at the same time. Yeah. You just, it's a balancing act. Age helps. Experience helps. Feedback helps. Yeah. Um, you know, when I first started, all I wanted to do was to make it whatever it is. Yeah. The longer it took, I was like, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so I love that I'm where I'm at today. Um, my dad is very much a bulldozer way, so I kind of picked that up. And he yeah. Encouraged, but it turns out that my rhythm, my innate rhythm that I listen to, my gut feeling, is less show showy and more like I'll let the work do the talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just yeah. now trying to carve out the time to actually do the work. Right, you know what I mean? Right, right, right. Circ circumstances are of course a lot of factors, but so I'm I'm super more at peace. Yeah, and, and I'm I felt like I was doing it for the wrong reasons before. Yeah. Now the reasons make so much more sense to me. Yeah. You know? Have you seen uh, Have you seen uh, the Avengers? Yes. Yeah. So you know that scene where um, uh, Doctor Strange says that one to, and I, that that just keeps ringing in my head. What if this is the one for me, right? What if this? What if I? What if this is best case scenario? The way they visualized that was, yeah. Like, oof, I'm, I'm so glad you brought that yeah. up because it's like, it's one thing for it to be a concept in also, your mind. Also, just ruined the movie for everybody. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but 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 it was captured visually yeah. in, in a very very like it can it's hit beautiful. You. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So so for me, like I, I always because my head keeps going, and I, I I think maybe you can relate to that. Is like, man, should have been this, should have done that, should have done this better. There's a lot of should have, but then it's like if I try to just cut that out and just think and realize that, what if this is the best case scenario? Yeah. What if I'm actually in the best case scenario right now? There's a good chance you are. Yeah. And it's just like, let's just, let's just see how it unfolds and just let life kind of do the work what, with what, me. What trips me up about that is the whole theory of parallel universes oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. you and I could be here having 
the same <laughs> podcast either yeah. a minute ahead or in or different I'm language. interviewing you in well, one. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. then it's like yeah. you know, mind blown. But yeah. um, it is as good as you make it. Mm -hmm. There's so much wisdom, and I hate to sound preachy, but man, like just find your peace, find your yeah. north, stick to it, unap unapologetically. So yes, good things happen. Like there's a, there's a flow that that I've I've gained from working with Dave and and other mentors. Um, that, that that's really helped me. I'm I'm, yeah. I'm super at peace when it comes yeah. to that. And even you mentioned like, as you've seen artists perform and you've yeah, opened yeah. for when you see them in action, mm -hmm. it sort of both humbles you, but also makes you realize that they're j actually just human. Yeah, 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 yeah. You mm -hmm. know, there is a method to the madness. A absolutely, and you like see it in motion. Grass is greener yeah. on the other side. When you see it, you're like, that could be me. Yeah, whatever that is. Yeah, but it makes it real, you know. And yeah. then, and I've had the chance to like. And put together many shows with iHeartRadio, a huge, yeah. I mean, like the biggest names. So I studied what worked, what didn't. Um, I saw the artists that were doing it for the love versus the ones yeah. that were. You can feel it. Absolutely. Yeah. But, it, but, but it was such an eye-opening experience for me. I'm so blessed and humbled by, by, by yeah. having had those opportunities. Um, and yeah, and you're like, that could be me. I just got to do my just do your part man. and the thing is you mentioned uh like a, a, a couple of things first the unapologetic mm -hmm. i think this for me was a theme of last year mm -hmm. of like why am i trying to apologize internally within myself about things that like like it's almost like i'm apologetic about the type of song that i'm working on today it's bad programming yeah it is that's what it is and the other thing is just on that is that you know you talked about um uh, sort of like opening the shell and and not being safe anymore mm -hmm. creatively yeah, and stuff, yeah. right? Yeah. I've sort of realized more and more that when we stop, like for me, when I stop thinking about the industry, when I stop thinking about, um, you know, how do you hack your way into yeah, yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're right? all looking for shortcuts. Yeah, and like, like the, mar corners. the marketing degree in my head is like trying to think of like, how do you work it? You don't, right? The this is We are in the arts, Right, Absolutely. create art. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, yeah, for sure. Create for sure. art. Obviously, you should know how to market it and mm -hmm. stuff. But yeah. like, what if you just let that child? I was going to say that animal, but it, it's, it's both. It's, it's it both. could be both. Yeah. yeah. What if you're just playing with sand and you're making castles and the you, playfulness, the yeah, curiosity, yeah. the spontaneity, and the worst case scenario, like you and I can write a song together right now. What's the worst case scenario? It's a piece of shit. We Doesn't matter. It. We had fun doing it. Yeah. I just want to have listen. My, my barometer is this. I want to spend more time doing the things I love. How do I gauge what I love? Mm -hmm. Was I paying attention to what time it is? I want to do yeah. something. And I'm like, suddenly it's four days later. I'm like, where did the time go? <laughs> the more that's I can spend time. my time doing yeah. that, yeah. that's that's how I measure happiness yeah. and success. Yeah. I could give a fuck about money. I could yeah. give a fuck about fame. I could give a fuck about anything. Health obviously is very important. Those, my loved ones, I want them to be safe and, and yeah. good. Second to that is me spending as much time doing Things where I'm like not worried about time, not yeah. worried about what where the next paycheck's gonna come from, whatever gets me there. That's my that's my. But the thing list. is, you know, all of these things, uh, the the tangibles, they they're a little bit of like it's the 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 relationship we have with the material possessions. Mm -hmm. From what I realized is, the more we try to strain and hold on, the harder they become. Yeah. And so a lot of the times, obviously, there are there's a certain structure to the way life works, and in doing this you end up having a very abstract lifestyle in yeah. the way that you make money yeah, and the way that you yeah. support yourself and stuff. Yeah, and yeah, people yeah. come along the way that support absolutely, you, blah, blah, absolutely. blah, 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 all of that. So you welcome all of that in, but it's just like, there's a lot of layers of things you thought you know that breaks down. But at the heart of it, I feel, for me, when there is this pocket of like, this is where we have fun and create yeah. and all the other things, they're going to take care of themselves. Yes, yes. You know, they actually take care of themselves. They do. I mean, we, we place a ton more stress and, and, and value on things that are, are yeah. you know, I don't know if it was Tony Robbins. He says, don't major in minor things. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> we major in minor things. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, Dave, another quote, he said, don't buy a couch. The second you buy a couch, you're not moving. Yeah. And he was big on moving. And the thing is like everything I have here, everything I've had, I've reset so many times, Hadi. Mm. If this all went away, I'm good. Yeah. Luckily it's all here. Yeah. How to get here, yeah. how to, and that took me a while to, yeah, of to, course. to be fair, but, that's why I feel so much more centered and yeah. so much more at peace. But then yeah. it's like the the home becomes just your system. Yeah. yeah. Right. So the anchor is is yeah. is is solid. Yeah. Doesn't mean that things don't come to shake it up. That happens all the time. You just gotta find whatever, you know, snaps you back into yeah. where, where you need to be. Yeah. 
So tell me more about this single. I'm so excited right. about it. So so Clarity, I wrote a couple of years ago. Uh, uh, you know, anxiety and uh, all of that stuff has been a part of my life for, for yep. a while. And uh, it never really goes away. It sort of just becomes this companion that you build comfort with. How long did it take you to get comfortable sharing and talking about it? Uh, Other than just from a society standpoint, it's more okay to talk about it. I yeah, feel like maybe that helped a lot. Yeah. But when when did that switch? Um, for you? So this was, I would say, 2011, 2012 uh, is when I actually started Googling what the hell this mm -hmm. is because I would wake up feeling like Sh shortness of breath, yeah, just like, palpitation. Yeah, even at work, like when I had a job at the time, I would just like in the middle of the day would need to just hide in the bathroom stall just to catch my breath, mm -hmm. right? And so were there triggers or? Just, I mean, for me, like, uh, for me, having a job was a trigger. You know what I mean? I can relate. Having a job, like driving to work and being in an office and having a boss and and all of those things. And not because of, uh, of, of like, ego or anything. I'm sure I have a fair share of ego. That's one of the signs. Yeah. I feel like, because I experienced something very similar. Talk about universal signs. That's a sign telling you. Yes. That's not what you should be doing. Okay, listen, I have to tell you, I have to tell you this, okay? And I probably mentioned this before, uh, but I, I will tell you the story, mm -hmm. right? Because it's, to me, it's something that centers me a lot, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So um, when I had my job back in Kuwait, which is when anxiety started to become very, very, very mm -hmm. prominent in yeah, my life, yeah, yeah. I started Googling it and stuff. And I, was, I thought it was that job, right? So I moved from Kuwait and I moved here and uh, worked with a company uh, uh, and, and I started getting the same exact Feelings. issues yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right and so um during that time i started seeing these number patterns everywhere right and it just felt like life was telling me something like dude this one That's time insane. it's That's crazy, crazy right i would say so I, so two things were happening right um i would see these crazy number patterns i'm i'm, I'm curious about those numbers because i've had something very 12 similar. 21 Oh my God. I had 11, 11 for a while. Yeah, I mean, I had 11, 11 came later, right? So 12, 21 everywhere, everywhere, right? This one time, I swear to God, I, I go into a cab. I didn't have a car at the time. Um, and I go into a cab and uh, was going to work. It was like 6 a.m. or something. I go into the cab. His watch, his timer is off in the car. It says 12, 21. I was yeah. like, come on, man. So anyway, <laughs> and, and there was a lot of like... Um, I had never researched anything about yeah. quitting your job, yeah, never, yeah, ever. Yeah, yeah. And I would just see it everywhere, right? Just things pop up out of nowhere. I know that some people would say you're attracting things because you're, th and, and sure, I'm not trying to sell it to you. Th that's why I'm saying we don't know for sure. Yeah. It's just, you have to go based on what it feels. Yeah. I mean, I know I feel better not doing that. But that's, that's. That, that couldn't be wrong. Yeah. <laughs> that so, that's, be wrong. so again, I'm not trying to sell yeah, yeah, that yeah. per se, yeah, but yeah. it's my experience from yeah, it. Right. Sure. So a lot of numbers and a lot of, uh, 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 a lot of those like messages out of nowhere. And, uh, and then I just decided that I was done. And I didn't even want to do music. I was just like, I'm done with this. Mm. I don't know what I'm going to do next. I had a little bit of money on the side to cushion me through. Yeah. And so just started to slowly like open up to this new idea of, you know, uh, doing things. And I didn't really want to do music full time at the time. You know, I, uh, I guess. What held you back? What reservation? Just the whole, have? like, you know, there's no security mm -hmm. and all of like, just the yeah, things yeah. that we've the programming. Passed, passed on. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and my, and, and my family is extremely supportive. Right. But also in the beginning, there was a lot of concerns like, sure. oh man, he's going to do music full time. Shit. You know what I mean? But like, it's just, I, I saw and felt and knew what I didn't want to do. So I wanted to start to discover what I actually did want to do. So yeah. one thing at a time uh, started to happen. And um, yeah, I mean, these, this is how these sort of signs started to come together. I forgot the the question, by the way, that you brought it up. Brought up. About when did you feel comfortable sharing? Like you said, you, you started to Google Oh, the anxiety it. thing. Yes, right, yes, right. Yes, yes. So um, honestly, I think... Uh, I think there was always things in songs that would seep in mm -hmm. that were like anxiety okay, okay, okay. themed. Yeah. Um, but I think um, like on Twitch, I've been able to talk about it a lot. On Instagram, I've, you know, whenever I feel like, you know, when you feel like the world's just not okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about catastrophes. Yeah, you just feel like everyone's yeah, sort of... Something's off. Yeah, 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 having a rough time, right? Mm -hmm. So I just would always feel like if I talk to a few people and they're having a rough ride, I just post something and say, look, if you're struggling out there, you're not the only person struggling. Like, yeah. you know, we're, yeah. we got you. Right. And so there's comfort in that, like misery loves company. So, um, 
but that, for me, like, I feel like it just became more comfortable for me to talk about in general mm. when I made peace with it internally. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember uh, at work at the time, this one time I called to take a day off because of anxiety and I didn't know what to call it. I was just like, I, I remember talking to like the CEO or something or the GM and saying, I feel nervous. And he's like, what the fuck does that mean? Right? Nervous about what? Yeah. Like, what whatever. do you mean? Like, yeah. just get to work. So it's, 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 yeah. you know, it's, heavy, it's, man. it's a little, it's a little horrendous, but mm. you know, I also understand because it's a far away concept to some people, Yeah, you know, and some people are just so switched on to work. There's no Not feelings. Just that. Again, the whole zero, zero, like, and we all feel things so differently. Like mm. sometimes you're trying to express something that may, like the whole ADHD, yeah. the whole misophonia. I don't know if you're familiar with that, where certain sounds trigger anger or whatever. Right. Those are hard to diagnose. They're hard. Like they're still finding out about things we didn't know about. You can easily blame someone for That's it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It, and they'll come up with like different naming and different categorizations and stuff yeah. like that. So it's not easy. I mean, it's cool that there's a wider acceptance of yeah. it. So yeah. more people are aware that it's a thing. Whereas before it, you had to search for something you didn't know the name yeah. of. Yeah. It sucks that you had to deal with it for as many years as you did before it caught on. And it can easily sound like I'm like yeah, you're, for sure. like you're oh, just okay. playing victim or something. And that's the thing, because, but like, I hate someone making me feel wrong for mm. it, but I hate that I made them feel wrong because they didn't know any better. Yeah. So it's it's both their fault and not their fault at the same so, time. So was anxiety like a part of your life as well? Not necessarily. I mean, I experienced certain, I moved to Syria in 2016 for mm. about two years and, and it was really the only episode like where gotcha. I, I'd never experienced it. I had friends who had it. And from an empathetic, empathetic place, I felt bad, but yeah. I couldn't relate you can in relate. the slightest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I was like- That's good. I, I mean, I mean, luckily, I, I think I'm pretty empathetic. Yeah. I mean, you don't want to see someone you care about or even don't care about. You don't want to see someone experiencing pain. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, sometimes you could easily, you know, misconstrue it as, oh, they're faking it or yeah. like you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like when I saw it, I was like, oh my God, this feels horrible, but I have no frame of reference. Like yeah. I have no idea you what don't you're know what feeling. Going through, yeah. And I want to ex understand. So you ask questions, but you can't be in their head. Yeah. So when I experienced it, I was like, oh my God. Yeah. You know, like you feel so bad because you felt bad for them, but you didn't know exactly what they were yeah. going through. Like a very important example. My sister has a like just insanely, uh, um, uh, crazy sense of uh, uh, smell mm. she came in the first she was visiting me in la and her first, you know she walks in she's like man it smells in here and like i took it as an insult yeah. she didn't mean to insult me yeah. but like it just didn't sit, sit well and like i didn't realize that she had a heightened sense yeah, of smell yeah, yeah, or whatever yeah. and then maybe an hour or two i started to smell something off i just i hated myself for how angry i got at right, her because right, right, right. i'm like i don't smell it so therefore it doesn't yeah, smell yeah 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 Fuck, man, y you are not zero, zero. You are yeah. not the center of anything. Yeah. You know, it's like, and I love this example, the whole black and blue dress versus white and gold. You remember there was this phenomenon on the internet, like it was a dress and they showed it to you. It's like, do you see it? Right. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's something similar w with audio. It's like either you hear Lowry or something else. It right. depends whether you hear treble versus yeah. bass. Man, I wish those examples existed 30 years ago. Yeah. Just to say, look, there are people that see, they're not lying when they tell you this is blue and black. Yeah. Turns out half the population or whatever, and the other half sees it, colors that have nothing to do with that. It's yeah. a phenomenon that we weren't aware of. Yeah. Again, it's an awareness. We were such asshole. We are still assholes. There's a lot we don't know. I mean, we should aspire to work on ourselves and not be so quick to jump yeah. and, and, yeah. and the, the conclusions and stuff. So that's really my my my, uh, my experience. I mean, the it. thing with it, as long as like if it, because there's a lot of things that people are going through that we'll never understand, yeah. right? Like I think I think there's just just the background, um, just a lot of things you can't actually wrap your head around everything that someone like you could tell me a story right now. I could tell you a story. You may not, but the thing is, empathy is what you can do, right? For sure, for so sure. like like you you may not you don't need to exactly understand. And I feel like that's the most important thing. Like you, 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 you know, your empathy towards people who have talked to you about anxiety. That's, yeah. that's the only thing you could do. Right. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's, the but it still puts me so far from what they're going gotcha, through gotcha. in a way that I can react. I could still act in a non-favorable way right. where at my core, I don't mean to be. It's like an you're overthinking if something you say or do could exactly like make it worse. How can I be in your head a little more? Like I yeah, want, yeah, I yeah. really want to be in your head, but I just cannot. Yeah. Like, Maybe it's a, a word you say. Maybe you can equate it to something that I have more experience with. Yeah. But like, I feel crippled because I'm like, I want to relate more. Yeah. I just can't. I, I don't feel that 
clearly you're you, you know you're in distress right yeah, now yeah i don't know how to go there with it's you like help me understand yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> take me there with you so yeah. that i just want to help you yeah know? the problem with this stuff is when people are going through that it's like it's very hard to explain because anxiety is actually very difficult to explain. Yeah. And and my thing with it is the way I learned to deal with it is once I know that it is anxiety, like, yeah. and it could take me a few days if I'm going through a patch mm. and it could take me a few days to realize that I'm in an anxiety sort yeah. of episode. Yeah. Once I know that what it is, I catch it in the act. You don't need to step in the ring with it anymore. It's an awareness. When, yeah. Once you're aware that you're aware, it's like, again, taking yourself out of it. For me, I can say more about depression. I've had bouts of depression. Right. But they're, again, to going back our common thread, it's usually when I'm not doing music. Right. It's not whether I only beat myself up when I know I'm not doing enough. Yeah. When, when I'm doing my part, man. Yeah, you're good like, to go. I'm good. Yeah. I don't care about the results. I'm doing everything I yeah. can. It's just like, I know I should be doing X and I'm not. That takes me in a depression. Uh, you, you know, I wouldn't want anyone to be around yeah. me. I mean, I, I, it gets deep. So and it's clear that depression and anxiety are somewhat related, yeah, yeah. but they're not exactly the same. Yeah. You know, so th that's probably about as close as I've, I've gotten to that. Right. Know? Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, no. But I, no, I, but I mean, like for me, for, for me, I feel like the those instances in my life where massive billboards telling me to, to go the other way. So, yeah. so like, I just realized that doing things that like, like, and, and again, it's, it's not a diss towards people who are in business or who have jobs. It's just, I'm not here on it's earth not you, to do it's that. It's not for you. Yeah. Like this experience of mine right I now. I couldn't relate with you more. Yeah. yeah. Like this is great. Like I, there's a lot of golf players out there. I just not my thing. Right. So for me, I'm here and you can, you know what people can say, maybe it's in my head. Sure. I'm sure it's in my head. Right. But also I feel like in my heart that I'm here to do things related. I feel like if like if someone's listening to this, right, and they feel like there's a certain tug inside pulling them in a certain direction and keeps them up at night, and it's something that could be potentially uh, happiness-inducing, just run with it, you know, even if it's a faraway concept, even if it's abstract, even if it sounds stupid, because... I guess if you were like, if I was to sit and explain what I do in my life to someone who is like, as you were saying, try explaining it to someone who doesn't uh, do it, it. I would sound like a lunatic. Yeah. yeah to them. Like, like, you know, you know, these instances in your life where, you know, you're going to meet with someone and have some form of confrontation. Yeah. You have your lines prepped yeah, and stuff, absolutely. but when you're there with them, it just, you can't say those words because the frequency that you guys function on is just so different. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not talking about like when you like, uh, like have like in my, in my, in my song pressure, I talk about forgetting the lines because you have a crush on someone that's happiness killing your lines. Right. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I'm talking about like when you're trying to reason with someone and you have these ideas in your brain, but like when you get there, you just look at them and you're like, man, you're just not going to understand me. Yeah. I give up, <laughs> you know, white yeah. flag, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? So, so for me, I feel like it's, uh, you know, the abstract way of doing things could be, uh, could be a way for other people as well. So by the time this is out, you can already check out the album. It's going to be out on all the platforms. Mm -hmm. The music video is going to be out on my YouTube channel. Yep. And, uh, yeah, it's just, uh, really excited. I shot the music video and currently finishing it up, uh, I need to actually finish it in the next yeah. couple of days, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Yeah, just to get out. And, and so, what's Mike's involvement? Uh, are you guys doing anything together? I mean, other than him producing it, will he be involved anymore beyond what he's already done? Or uh, I mean, no. For for clarity, that's basically it. He yeah. produced it. So what I did is I sent him the vocals and the piano, mm -hmm. and he went from there and just sort of built everything around there. Gotcha, gotcha. And uh, for as far as the release goes, it's, uh, yeah, just going to be uh, me sort of trying to uh, get as much shows as possible when it's out there. Speaking of that, do you have anything lined up to promote I this? I don't have any shows lined up right now. Yeah. The world is still sort sure, of opening sure. up slowly. Yeah. But um, I've played shows here, obviously. I played in Lebanon as well. But my my, like putting it out there into the universe and life. I want to go on tour. That's, that's my, my next, my yeah, next target, yeah, my yeah. next plan. So, uh, trying to make that happen. Um, but also just sort of letting it naturally come into place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, my targets with this is to try to get into some radio in the U S okay. um, and, um, you know, try to get into some charts and, and, and so have, you know, the tangibles also happen, but also I think at the core of it, I would, 
loved for to, for people to connect with the song and with yeah, the record yeah, and all the course. themes that are, of course, that are inside and stuff. Yeah. Uh, uh, two points I really want to make sure mm. we, we touch on. Currently, where would you say is the bulk of your audience? I mean, clearly the, there's an internet factor to it, so yeah. that's geographically independent. Yeah. Uh, but we have pockets. Where, yeah. where, where where is that for you? Um, right now? So there's uh, a lot in the U.S. Okay. Uh, there's uh, Netherlands and the U.K. Okay. Uh, the Middle East, also uh, Egypt, Lebanon, uh, Dubai, uh, Tunis, Morocco, nice. Uh, Jordan. Forgot if I mentioned Jordan um, and uh, Australia as nice. well. So there's there are some uh, Germany, uh, some really good pockets. I'm I'm just thinking like that sounds like a world tour to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I want to, I want to. So you know, we'll get there. We'll get there uh, slowly but surely. Yeah. And uh, um, it's it's just kind of exciting to be honest because oh, I can imagine before before I started streaming on Twitch, I think the 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 audience was mostly based around the Middle East. Yeah. But uh, Twitch has been a little bit of a it's sort of like you're busking. Yeah. But in, in the sky so yeah, everyone yeah, can yeah. see you yeah, you know yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's very cool that leads me to the next question on your feelings about doing it from here do you feel like you need to go elsewhere to amplify your message because unfortunately mm. from my perspective there's so much talent here but again it's a tough sell it's a it's a yeah. really hard proposition to to try to push english music to a mostly non-english consuming because yeah. it's it's so diverse here yeah so you don't have enough of a strong pocket to really yeah. cater to it might get there eventually but i fear for someone as talented as you are that geography could be li a limiting yeah. factor what's your take on that i mean i think uh, i think of it in two ways right one way is i'm here right now how can i use that to the best of my advantage i'm here for a yeah, reason yeah, right yeah, so yeah. and uh, the other side is how can i go from here to the next thing yeah um and the, and the reality is I actually don't have the answer to that question at this moment. Do you know what the next thing is, regardless of how you get there? Like, like target wise for me, I mean, obviously for me, I want to, um, I want to collaborate with a lot more artists mm -hmm. internationally. Sure. Um, and I, again, want to play shows because I think there's nothing, and I'm sure you can attest to that. There's nothing like, like being there in the moment with people. It's a, especially for the kind of music you make. I mean, it's one yeah. thing if it's everything you were doing is electronic or, yeah. or more produced per yeah. se, but for your sound and for your kind of music, yeah, you need, you there's need a soulful that. element oh, yes, yes, that yes. you can feel. For sure. Um, so for me, this is what I want. My target is to, uh, get out there in the world and, 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 and have these opportunities yeah. present themselves, uh, uh, to to play shows in different territories and, yeah um just just you know s spread the music everywhere that's yeah, that's what yeah, i want yeah. yeah i'm very hopeful for what you're doing thank again you. i was super impressed thank you you're so talented and and i hope things continue to align in your favor appreciate it um i feel like at some point you're gonna have to even though look it's gonna happen it's just i don't know that anyone knows when it will where it's like again collaborating with external yeah artists could it's like it doesn't matter i'm working so let's say i'm mike shinoda yeah i'm working with an amazing artist based out of dubai that that adds to your story suddenly being in dubai isn't a hindrance yeah there will come a time where people will want to be in dubai because that's where x did their yeah. thing and now yeah. they're a it dubai like based the hub. exactly yeah but we're not there yet and no. i don't know how how far away we are from that it's very yeah. possible it's a it's a feasible thing i just i hope it doesn't cripple someone as talented as you are or others that that are kind of doing it see I, my, my my thinking is always that um that once a place and i'm sure you felt that right once a place uh or once another place starts to look like the new thing that you need to be in yeah you start to feel like you know your eye is on it you're you start to plan towards it and there's stuff. that and you've done your work you, you're yep. established in that place yeah so whoever wants to come here they have a lot of even if they're super good yeah you're the guy who was there from the beginning yeah. worked Work, work to inside out. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. So that, that's a very thing you have, a very good thing you have going. For Thank you. Sure. I mean, I, I, I feel like I feel like the world is the smallest that it's ever been right now. Absolutely, right. The yeah. fact that we can do what a blessing. Things like what this. a blessing. It's crazy, right? Yeah, it's yeah, insane. Yeah. So uh, the fact that I get to hang out with my community from all around the world, mm -hmm. and and the fact that I get to play uh, songs on Twitch, that's that's been a blessing yeah. for me. Um, but also be able to set up things like tours with my community and with people that I may meet along the way. Like I've played uh, Twitch London's um, a show twice. It's, nice. a it's a virtual uh, show. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, hopefully they'll be uh, in, in the flesh uh, show to come once things are, yeah. are, are, are back and uh, open up and stuff. But like, I, I, f I feel like, you know, you, you always sort of have it in your hands somehow, Yeah. but also need to work with the cards that you're dealt. Sure, so sure, sure. Uh, yeah, That's I own great. the prize. 
That's awesome. <laughs> I can't thank you enough again for taking thank the time. You. I'm thank sure you. there will be a part two and three and four, hopefully. Let's do it. I'm looking forward to it. I, I, I want to be respectful of your time. Thank I, you so I know much. you've got a thing coming up. So yeah. thanks again for everything. I appreciate you having and me. And I'll thank see you. you soon, man. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, bud.